All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the coverage of the 2023 Word Cup. Uh, today we are playing from Albany, New York. I'm Matt Panic, joined by Jared Capel. Jared, how are you doing today? Oh, great to be here. I understand you guys had a really exciting slate of games this morning, and I'm really looking forward to the start of this main event. Uh, so many talented players competing here, and in our first game, we got a matchup of two young phenoms. Mac Meller, number one in uh, the NWL standings right now, against Zachary Ansel. Yeah, two young guns on board one to start things off. Uh, both of these players, you know, up and comers. Max has been one of the best players in North America now for the better part of a decade, but started playing tournaments when he was 10 or 11 years old and, and very quickly became one of the top in the country. Uh, Zach is a two-time school Scrabble champion himself. That's a Scrabble for fifth through eighth graders specifically. And uh, both of them now in Division One of one of the biggest tournaments of the year. $60,000 on the line uh, for the winners across the TWL and NWL divisions of this tournament. Lots of money, and it's going to be a great time. We're doing NWL action tonight, and tomorrow morning we'll have some CS. All right, guys, you guys ready? Okay, I think you can get going. And uh, we'll kind of go back and forth from there. Uh, looks like we are ready to go. Zach will be going first in this game and showing us beautiful time drawing technique bag well above eye level. And we are set to begin round one of the 31 game Word Cup. Yeah, we love to see it. And Zach is such a strong anagrammer and he will be put to the test here against Mac. Uh, it can be intimidating playing on camera. It can be intimidating playing against the number one player. So. Zach really has his work cut out for him, and it'll start tough with two W's, a B, and a P. A lot of clunky tiles there. Yeah, not not what you want to see to begin a, begin your tournament. Uh, Wept is probably the best play you have available, W-E-P-T. Uh, noob maybe as well, or you could consider just exchanging four tiles here, exchange W-W-B-P. Um, what do you think, Jared? Yeah, I think all of them are reasonable options. All are pretty close. Uh, you really don't want to keep the WB combination going forward if you play something like Wept. So I can see the exchange, but he's going to go with Noob. I guess we were talking about how they're two of our younger players, and this is a fresh word, and I really like to see it to start this tournament. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Mac setting up Spokane on his rack. Uh, that is not valid in Scrabble, and there are no bingos in that rack as well. But given a shout out to a city that I'd imagine he's visited, Mac does a lot of driving, a lot of hiking, a lot of road tripping. And uh, he's been basically everywhere now. He's that song, I've been everywhere. Um, so shout out to a city. And, uh, and it's fun to see when the players spell out what's on the racks. So we know what they're thinking. Um, but instead of just thinking of cool, non-valid words here, he's going to be looking for something that he can put down. He could fish off with just the KO for Cobb, leaving Pains, a very strong leave. He could also look to be a bit more aggressive and uh, play something that'll play off more tiles, but also score a lot more points. Yeah, I think of the scoring options, Peak, P-E-A-K on top of Noob, uh, scores 25. That seems to be, uh, you know, in terms of scoring points, the best. I can't imagine you don't play Cobb here, though. K-O-B, A-E-N-P-S is such a good leave. You can see Max even got it set up. I bet he's going to take a little more time, see if there's any clever setup where he can set up his K or his P. Um, you know, playing B-O pretty solid to set up your P underneath, but there's not a really good way to see any plays like that that I'm aware of. I bet we see Cobb here in the next few seconds. Yeah, I think I probably would have already played it by now, but Mac is a bit more methodical, and it definitely works out for him. One thing I know from watching Mac's YouTube series, Mac versus Machine, where he's playing a best of 100 set against uh, the world's computer bot, is that he finds plays instantly. So I think he already was well aware there wasn't going to be a bingo, and that's why uh, he's going to make this play. 
Yeah, if you haven't followed Mac Miller on, uh, on YouTube yet, he's got a whole YouTube series of instructional videos and humorous videos, view, uh, teaching videos all across the gamut. Search up Mac Miller, the way his name is spelled on YouTube, and find the rest. And while we're plugging YouTube channels, if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button for Let's Play Scrabble. We'll have all the tournaments here, all the World Cup tournament streams for you from this Let's Play Scrabble channel, as well as a bunch of other cool programming they've put on in the past and a lot more yet to come. Yeah, there's been content with me, content with you, content with lots of great players, lots of great formats. Here we just have a 31-game tournament. It'll be a dogfight. You can't win the tournament on day one or two, but you can definitely put yourself in a difficult position. So it's really important to get every win you can. And Zach is going to be making the play here of Paw, leaving FICT, so he's starting to get a bit closer towards a rack that he'll be happy with, and that play also is nice because of how well it scores. Yeah, I think one better option there was WAIF in the same spot. Uh, just uh, one clutters that rack a little bit better, holds CPT, which is three consonants, but three consonants that mesh rather well together, and you score a few more points with WAIF. So a little bit of missed equity or missed opportunity there for Zach, but not a large mistake by any means. So I, I think Wave is probably a better play. Yeah, and I'm seeing in the chat, other people are noticing the background noise. Uh, I don't know if a mic is on in the playing room, if it's been like that in the early bird event. Uh, hopefully we'll get that addressed soon, but as I think already it's sounding maybe a touch better. But Matt has one of these racks where he's very close to a bingo, but it doesn't look like he's going to quite hit. So he could definitely turn KA into Cobb and uh, go down that way. That would probably be the way to score the most, but he's going to have to use at least three tiles there, maybe Nib, which he has set up on the right part of his rack. Yeah, this is this is tough. I think Nib, Nib looks reasonable. APES is a decent leave. You've got that N floating there to help. The board is res relatively conducive to bingos, and Nib does take the front S for Snib, um, which he has, so he's setting himself up. Nib does look to be a very strong play here. Yeah, we might see a bit of a staircase forming here, which you don't necessarily expect to see with two players with such great word knowledge, but sometimes the staircase plays are the best plays, and he looks like he's pretty close to playing Nib here, as we expect. Yeah, the, the only other consideration, maybe NABE in the same spot, scores eight additional points. The leave is definitely worse, IPS, as opposed to APES. But I think because Nib sets yourself up with the cabs hook, with the snib spot, uh, that, that alone makes it good. Right. And Nib is, in fact, what Mac is going to play. Uh, we agree here on the commentary team. It seems like mm -hmm. the chat does as well. And uh, we'll keep going from there. Yeah, when you're holding an S and Nib takes a front hook of an S for Snib, it's definitely good to open lanes like that. But uh, what Mac doesn't know is that Zach himself has an S. So we'll see if he's able to use that spot. Uh, we might see a bit more of the staircase forming. Maybe we'll get all the way to the triple word score in the top right. <laughs> That'd be something. Welcome to, to Division 1, Board 1. Uh, we just staircase up to the top. Um, and looking over at Mac's rack, even though it's not his turn, I see the first blank of the game has shown up. So Mac is definitely going to be bingoing next turn. And we will see what Zach does to try and score some and put himself to counter with a bingo after Mac will get his inevitable one down. Zach has one play that seems to be better than all of the other options. Uh, to me, it's very tough to spot. Uh, it's just a two-tile play. CWM through the W oh. and new, making cow and uh, doubling up the C and Coom. the M. Yeah, Coom, CWM, uh, sets up his S too. Both players yep. setting up S's that they're sitting on. Um, so Coom, really tough to spot, but definitely in my head, the best play here. Uh, otherwise, he's got some high scoring overlaps like FIAT or FIATS. Uh, he could play MAC, M A C, making N A and pick. Or Max. Yeah, as playing well. Mac against Mac. I like the sound of that. I like that too. Get in his head. Yeah. <laughs> he's so uh, close he's, to he's... stuff like fascism or fascist. Uh, but that Coom play, it's so hard to see. But look where the C and the M would both be on multiplier scores. When you have the bigger point tiles, that's where you want to put them. 
Uh, he's now setting up Max. The decision to play the S there would be tough. It would score an extra 11 points if my math is right. Uh, exactly. So well, normally we think an S is worth about 10. You also want to look on the board. There aren't too many other words on this board that would end in S, especially after you take out the nib hook. So I could definitely see playing the S here, even though a lot of players might look to hang on to it. But he finds Ooh, Coombe. Good. I love that. Good. Yeah, that's always a sigh of relief. When you see that play, you take the extra right. few seconds on your turn and you notice it. Coombe is definitely better than the other plays. I'm sure Zach is aware of it and, and happy to see it come down. Well spotted. So Coombe yeah, that's high level scrabble. That's very difficult. And like you said, it's so easy to give up on a play when you see another good option, like he could have played Mac or Fiat or whatever. Uh, yeah, now yeah. Mac has to decide. He has an embarrassment of riches here. Which bingo will be best? And I, I think his best bingo was Ephedra's down from the E, and that was blocked oh, wow, by yeah. Coom. So another thing that makes uh, makes Coom a solid play. Is there anything forming Scow uh, to the S E? Because that would definitely score a lot. No, there is not. Okay. Um, so I see something like die phase and snib or and cooms. Uh, obviously, there's words like sharp, phrased, uh, plashed. What do you guys see in the chat here? Which bingo would you play uh, out of all of these options that he has? There's another fun one in there where the blank is a W. I wouldn't play it, oh, yeah. um, but that's a cool one. And I'll, I'll throw that out for chat. Let you guys uh, try to find that. That's that very good difficult options. because of the letter pattern. You don't normally put the letters in that order. Yep, yep, yep. So a little puzzle for you all. Um, the highest scoring bingo available for Mac is 90 points. That's die phase and snib. Uh, double the D, double the P. Um, but he doesn't seem to be playing that. He's going with it looks like phrased, which is yeah. two points less, but probably better defensively. Right, he's putting the blank under the triple letter score instead of uh, putting an I down beneath the triple word score. So he's too, uh, more defensive in sort of two senses there. He's, he keeps the board very open long term, and Mac, with his word knowledge, will always like to keep a board open long term. I mean, Daifei's also would have kept it open, so I guess that's not necessarily why, but I, I think you're right. The immediate defense here is why Phrase looks like a stronger play. The other thing I like about die phase, and I'm not super familiar with Zach Ansel or his word knowledge or his game, but Mac is very, very sharp on the words, sharper than pretty much anybody out there, save maybe Nigel. Um, I like making a play like die phase if I know the hooks, because does my opponent, would my opponent be willing to try an S or a D on the end of that? Die phase takes right. no hooks. I know that because I looked it up, but over the board, I wouldn't be so certain. And, uh, you know, if you've got better word knowledge, it's always good to try to set traps like that for your opponent and induce a mistake. Uh, Mac yeah. has done what we call in tournament Scrabble right. a lock box and has drawn the second blank immediately after using the first blank. And the high scoring J to go with it, which isn't exactly a bingo tile, but it'll let him score uh, before he gets his inevitable bingo down. So we will see Fag come down on the top right. That leaves a nice strong lead. This is the closest that I think Zach has been to getting to his bingo, A-I-T-S, very nice leave. Um, Mac will try and find a way to drop the J and some of his uglier tiles here, the O, the U, the G, and leave himself boys to bingo one turn from now. I am just not seeing many good options for that J. Like I see Jingo through the Jingo, N, yeah. and, but uh, otherwise, you know, he went from Judo, which looked to be a decent play, to not a whole lot. Yeah, Judo would have set up his O at the top right also, which would have been a nice uh, secondary benefit of that play. Although where the O would have slotted would have been very dangerous beneath the D there, uh, a double letter score next to a triple word score. When you're looking at multipliers on the board, you want to look not just where there's one multiplier, but where there's two, because uh, he would get times two for the letter score, and then the whole play would be times three. 
Uh, Goji is another option, and Mac was looking at Mojo and Kobo. But speaking of, you know, two dangerous hotspots at the same time or, or two, you know, big squares, Mojo would set up potential four-letter words for Zach that are, are devastating for Mac, easy 40 or 50 points. Um, so definitely a tricky turn. Goji, Jingo, Mojo, they've all got merit. Um, and then of Goji, where would you play it? Kind of on, on the bottom or up top with PI? Lots to think right. about for Mac, and I don't know that I know the answer, but if anybody can instruct us on this turn, it's Mac Miller. We can all take a lesson or two from him. Absolutely. I think I'd play it beneath the P, uh, try and keep the bottom open for his blank to get a bingo down. That's sort of how I'd be inclined. And I think it would also start bringing plays down. Uh, maybe if he were to make another parallel a horizontal bingo after Goji, like with Coombs, he could really start to shut that board. Yeah, I agree. I like Goji up top for exactly that reason. Uh, long term, if you hit a Coombs bingo, this board gets tight fast. And uh, right. that is what Mac decides to do. Goji's going to come down. And unfortunately for Zach, he did get an R into his AIST, but that Z is going to really muck up his chances of bingoing here. So I wouldn't be surprised yeah, but... if we see COO. Right. It's not the worst thing not to bingo when you get a 32-point play and leave so strongly with uh, R-A-I-T-S, which you would if you play Zoo. I think that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, thinking back to Max last turn, you were saying how setting up hooks that people might not know, like he could have played Jingo and maybe Zach would have thought to put an S on it, right? Uh, it, it only takes an E-S or an I-S-H. So again, one thing Mac maybe doesn't do as much as other players of his caliber is punish his opponent for the fact that he has stronger word knowledge than they do. You know, someone like Jackson or Josh uh, would definitely be looking for any chance they could. Mac, perhaps a bit more sportsmanly, but uh, even the number one player in North America perhaps could be a bit more aggressive. Yeah, yeah, definitely a great point there. Though I wouldn't say Mac never does that. He just maybe doesn't think of it quite as much as, as some other players. Looks like Zach here is looking at Orzo instead of Zoo. Uh, Orzo would bring this board back wide open. I think Zach is starting to get the sense that things are getting tight and closed, and he is down 51 points. Though after Zoo, he's only down 19 in a turn, so... Not the worst thing. We at home have the knowledge that Mac has a blank on his rack, and this game's not quite as tight as it seems. But of course, Zach doesn't, and Zach's going to feel in good shape. Down just 19 points, holding AI RST. Zoo looks to be a solid play. Orzo definitely breaks up the rack a little more than we'd like to. AIST is nowhere near as stable as AI RST, um, and you're only getting one extra point out of Orzo. So uh, an interesting decision here. I, I'd be surprised to see anything but Z-O-O, -O, but Zach taking his time uh, before he makes that play. And it is what's going to come down at the end of the day. Yeah, that was tough because, like you said, the board shape is better after Orzo. But one nice thing about this board shape is that the double-double lane stays open beneath the G. And if he draws an E and another uh, consonant to go with it, he could definitely get a play like Granites or something. Uh, Mac Instead, has just one step like in his teeth. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Mac has just one seven. It's illusory, and there's there's no doubt that he's going to find it. In fact, there he goes, setting it up right now. Um, illusory doesn't quite close off the board as much as Mac may have hoped out of a bingo. You know, it's going to float an, an additional bingo line out there. Um, but you don't have a lot of choice. There was a bingo through the G, Rue Ghostly but that got blocked by Zoo. And uh, I don't, I'm not seeing anything else venously through the N in Noob. But, uh, uh, but that that's a lot worse just because it scores a lot less. The the only other play that, that merits some consideration, I think, is is foregoing the bingo here and playing Soyuz, S-O-Y-U-Z, to the Z, holding E-L blank. That scores 34. But I don't think that's enough to rationalize passing up a bingo uh, Mac probably just going to take a little bit of time, maybe look for some nines, maybe uh, maybe just make sure this is the only bingo he has. There's not anything that uh, blocks better or scores better. I think he's really looking for bingos from that G just because if he could hit something, it would really score a lot. One interesting thing about illusory is that it takes a front hook uh, of a D for delusory. Like 
something that uh, is a bit fake, I guess. So if it comes down, it will be able to be hooked and we'll see if uh, both players spot that. Uh, I, illusory doesn't quite give back a spot for Zach to play uh, the seven on his rack, which currently plays in two spots. It would actually get blocked by both. He has scimitar, which can be spelled a bunch of different ways, but S-I-M-I-T-A-R is the spelling of this one. It currently plays with cabs and with coombs, um, but illusory would knock both of those out at once. Mac can't know that he's doing that, but that'll be a devastating blow for Zach. Yeah, um, I really like the way that the illusory play blocks the right side of the board. It really takes out a lot of lanes. So even though it gives a touch back on the left, it really doesn't give back all that much. So I think we're going to see it come down pretty soon. Mac has already used over or just approaching 11 minutes. So he's really going to want to make this play sooner than later. And here it comes. So Illusory is going to come down. Matt can't feel super good about giving up that D hook, but, uh, you know, you got to do it. There's, there's no other options available out of that. Um, and uh, Zach certainly can't feel great about getting bingoed on two out of the last three turns with both of the blanks. Um, it's, it's tough to beat the best player in North America, but it is a lot tougher to do it without any blanks. So Absolutely. Tough break, <laughs> tough break for Zach. And getting his bingos blocked. You know, it's one thing to get hit with a bingo, but it's another thing when you can't respond when you, a second ago, were thinking for sure one of the two options would stay open. Uh, if I'm Zach here and there is no bingo available, maybe Impy is the play. I am to the PI in the top middle of the board. But one of the problems with that play is it really doesn't open anything new. Uh, it leaves so nicely, so you think you're in a good position to bingo, but on this board, are you? So if not, maybe actually a better play is Rim, uh, GI, and Zoom. That also sets up the T for Trim. So I might be thinking of that, even though, again, you're playing off the R, so the leave is a bit worse. Once again, we're deciding, do we want to keep the R to keep our leave balanced, or do we want to make the play that uh, shapes the board a bit better? Yeah, and I think... As the score gets more and more lopsided one way or the other, you want to play a little bit less for equity and a little bit more for board shape. And so I think you have to play off the R here. You have to play rim and open up that side of the board. That's going to leave delusory there, and it's going to set up another bingo line two, two hexes over. Uh, I, that's the play you have to make here. But if I'm Zach... I set up Scimitar on my rack out of frustration to show the stream. Yes, I knew the bingo, and I'm well aware right. that it got blocked in both spaces. Uh, feel some pity for me. And, uh, Zach, we do. That's a, that's a bad beat. Yeah, taking a turn from poker. Uh, the little bit of the stream I caught this morning, you were mentioning how so many other Scrabblers play poker. It's one of those games that seems to connect with uh, the certain brain styles of Scrabble players as well as poker players. Yeah, and I think part of the reason there's such an overlap between those two is, unlike some of the other games, Scrabble is a game that is part skill and part luck. And you really want to harness the randomness and make it play in your favor. Other games like chess, uh, no luck whatsoever. It is all skill, it is all thought um, and openings and study. Uh, but, you know, part of what brings us to Scrabble is the, the maddening nature of, like, some games you're going to get nothing, and you have to try to beat lower-rated players even when you draw nothing. Some games you're going to get everything, and genius players like Mac are going to find ways to steal them from you anyway. So uh, that's just one of the beautiful things about, about this game, harvesting, harnessing the randomness and uh, making it work for you and not against you. Yeah, you have to win the unwinnable games to get a rating like Max current 2102 here in Wigpro. As Rim comes down, we love to see it. I think we've been seeing some really high level play in this game. Yeah, yeah. I think all of these plays are uh, pretty much the best play. Uh, maybe Paw could have been Waif and phrased, I would have made die phase just because we like exploiting that hook. But otherwise, uh, everything seems to be right on so far. Some high level play on board one from both players. Absolutely. And 
Uh, neither player is going to be too happy with their draw here. Mac has the problem of having uh, two sets of duplicates and one triplicate. So he's got three E's, two O's, and two D's. Uh, he does have the D for delusory, but if he makes a play going down there, it starts opening the bottom of the board, and I don't know if that's what he wants to do. So you can see the hands go right to the head. He knows that these turns with the ugly racks sometimes are the most difficult. Mac has an interesting option here, once again, trying to exploit a word knowledge gap. Uh, Edo, E-D-D-O, and Delusory. Right. Edo is a nice little four that doesn't come up very often, but it doesn't take an S. It only pluralizes E-S. And, uh, you know, I would, I'm looking this up because I don't know, and I'm a 1900, 1950 rated player. Um, I wouldn't be sure of it, but I'm sure Mac is. And so that's another trap I would try to set here if I had perfect word knowledge. There's a question of where to play it. Do you do you put the first or second D in front of Illusory? But in either case, that S hook is going to be pretty important. Uh, I like that play quite a bit. I think if you want him to hook it, you play it the higher spot, because if you play it one spot lower, he's more likely to play something parallel to the O going down and taking away the power of the fake hook. Uh, he'll play rodeo here, or rodeo. Oh, that's a nice way to break up the whole rack. Yeah, um, I like the Edo time. idea again, though. Just like I happen to know that Edo and Jingo both don't take an S, but I didn't know about Die Phase taking the S. I wasn't sure on that one. So. Someone like Mac, he might look at players of our caliber, Zach, me, you, and think, you know, they probably know this. But the thing is, there's only a very few select players in North America who really have such a strong knowledge that when all these strange little words come up, they know very confidently if it takes a hook. Yes, and Mac is, is one of those players, and, uh, you know, certainly... Yeah, your opponent might know it even seven times out of 10, but setting up a hook they may or may not know 30% of the time is going to induce a lot of mistakes out of your opponent. Zach's got to start being frustrated here. How many times can I hold AIRST or AIST right. and not bingo? <laughs> He's done a good job balancing his rack all game and just can't seem to draw the bingo. And when he does, it's the one turn that there's no spots at all. I think he's got the right idea with the play like rivet through the E. It's going to slot an R right there on that middle triple word and uh, allow high scoring bingos to come either down to it or down from it and make Mac deal with trying to block that spot. So uh, I think that's a really good idea for him. It looks like he's also looking at Vita, V-I-T-T-A, making trim, T-O, and A-D. Um, that's a way to score even more points and does create another bingo line. It's not going to be a high scoring bingo line, but it'll be one that's rather tough to block. Though Mac is actually going to have T-Y-E-E -E as a very nice block that also scores quite well. Right, because Vita takes that back E. Uh, Mac played Rodeo, but he's already thinking defense. He's trying to take out the lanes from uh, Rim and the lanes beneath Illusory. So that's definitely why he made a play like that, even though it scored so little. Uh, I do like both of Zach's options here. I'm actually not sure which one I prefer. I think Rivet can be sort of hard to block initially, but you can make a five-letter play through the eye, and it sort of takes out above and below. Vida, like you said, but even if he plays something like Tai, it's lots of T in the triple lane, and he's leaving RS here. So I think this is a very strong idea as both players continue really high level play. Yeah, I, I think I would have chosen the same play as Zach here if I had seen it. It's tough to spot, but uh, I, I like it. You've got to continue scoring points. You know that Mac is going to. Mac, more than some other players, rather than trying to make the board tight and stop you from bingoing, he will just turn on the jets and fly away from you. And all of a sudden you blink and you're down 180 or 200 instead of just the 70 that you were trying to make up. Um, so good, good idea by Zach there. Open things up a little bit and also score a boatload of points and see if the tiles will bail you out instead of what they've been doing so far. And he gets a couple more duplicates, uh, a T and an R. And if a T comes into the lane, that's not what he was looking for. And looking at Max Rack, if we want to see him really put Zach to the test, he could put a Y onto Zoom. Uh, I don't think we're going to see that happen, but I have had Zoomy played against me in a tournament by an opponent who tried to get it by someone else later in the same tournament, and both times it came off the board. So I don't know if Zoomy is the sort of word you want to play, although it's definitely a word that people have thought is good. So something to keep yeah, an eye I, on at the very least. I played it at my second to last tournament, and I thought it was a word, and I'm rated 19. There you go. <laughs> so, you know? 
uh, typier, T-Y-P-I-E-R, through the PI at the top. Oh, beautiful. Cool play and a good way to score a decent amount of points. You don't want to hold ILU, but you do want to score 33 points. So that's an alternative to T-Y-E-E. If you're not worried about low-scoring bingos coming down in front of AD, I mean, those bingos also give you two triple word squares that you can hit back. So if you're not super worried about that spot, and typier is a good way to just keep things kind of the status quo, keep the board closed and score well, though that ILU leave could certainly backfire with five unseen I's, two unseen U's, two unseen L's, uh, duplicates or triplicates there could be a big danger for Mac. Yeah, sometimes if you're worried about a bingo, you have to think, well, I can definitely withstand the 60 point bingo hooking AD and slotting one spot before the double uh, word score but I really don't want to get hit with an 80 point bingo to the triple word score if I put a T there. And he knows that Zach's been sort of trying to groom his rack a bit. He did just play off five, so his rack is a lot more random, but of those five, he could still have, uh, aside from those five, he could have still hung on to an S or something like that. So we'll see what he does. He's now put the T and Y together on the end of his rack. He might go the Taiyi approach. Um, he definitely doesn't want to open anything in the bottom right. So I think, It'll either be type here or type Uh In the chat, if you're seeing another play we are not, please share it with us uh, or just tell us how we're doing. Uh, if you have any questions, I know a lot of people in the chat are high rated players who are very experienced in the tournament scene, but there are probably a lot of you who are new to Scrabble, maybe thinking about joining us for a, uh, an upcoming tournament. So just post a message, let us know what you're thinking and we'll be quick to answer. And if you are thinking about getting into local tournaments, uh, uh, wordgameplayers.org is how you'll find information and live coverage of this tournament and other tournaments. you find one in your area and sign up for it if you're interested in doing that. Uh, so TYEE is the play that comes down. Uh, that's kind of what we thought was going to happen. Mac doing a good job taking his time. He is down to eight minutes, but as Jared mentioned, Mac sees almost everything instantly. I've seen him calculate pre-end game situations in his head in about three seconds. Um, so time is not going to be a major issue for Mac. No, but it looks like he's drawn into Utilizer. Uh which is most likely going to stay open here. I think uh, I could see Zach playing Riot or Tyro, uh, one of those four letter words through the Y in Illusory, just to set up his S. And once again, he's been leaving A-I-S-T a lot, and now he's going to be leaving probably I-R-S-T. So again, very bingo promising leaves. But one of the reasons he's having a hard time hitting the bingos is both those blanks uh, went early. And in both of Max's bingos with the blanks, he also used an S. So that's four tiles gone in two turns. So it's hard enough to fall behind a player like Mac, but when you fall behind and he's taking out all the good tiles with him, it just becomes a really tough challenge. Yeah, how do you get back into a game when there's a lot of garbage left in the bag? Uh, it's going to be tough, but it's definitely doable. Zach is the caliber of player who can get back in this game. He's been playing a, a very solid game so far. And I think a play like Riot... Uh, RYOT is, is what you have to do in this circumstance, try to open things back up. Yeah, he now has Tor set up on his rack. I guess that would play parallel to Rodeo, but I'd rather see him open up the bottom right side of the board here. I agree. Um, if you're going to have a low scoring play one way or the other, you might as well open up a quadrant to the board that's going to be hard to access otherwise. Um, and that is what he is doing. So he's just doing his due diligence, looking at Tor, he ends up making the play that I think is quite clearly better. And now uh, the only bingo I see is Utilizer. It'll slot in a very dangerous spot. So even if Matt gets like a 58 or 9 point bingo here, we could see fireworks with the right draw from Zach. And there is an E. Oh, and uh... <laughs> not quite. I mean, it's a satire rack, but there's not one that starts with an S. It looked like we might get stirred or stirred or something like that, but not quite. He's going to have Artseer, Terries, and Tarier, or Taris, Tarsier, um, three, three bingos that most Scrabble players will know. Um, but unfortunately, he's got that final S and uh, not going to be able to crush that spot if he wants to bingo this turn. 
So I it's wonder. so frustrating that there are no other S's left, because if there were, he could play something like Artsier and Riots opening the triple triple lane, and then he would be keeping two very active threats alive to give himself a chance to come back in this game. But if he plays something with Riots burning it, then that utilizer's hook is dead, and he really needs that hook being down such a big deficit as we get into the later portion of this game. So that brings up the question, do you bingo? I'm not sure. I, for, like for spread, you bingo. For winning percentage, uh, how do you really win after a bingo on this board? If you play something like Artseer and Mac has a bunch of cards in you know, yeah. maybe maybe there's a chance there, but you're stringing out an E and an R. So if he's got all vowels, he plays through the R. If he's got all consonants, he plays through the E, and he's going to block you either way. You do set up a second line underneath the A in Artseer, um, where you can hit a low-scoring bingo. But at this point, with this deficit, it is going to take two bingos. Our score widget hasn't quite updated, but we've got Mac at 321 to Zach's 204 after the bingo. Um, and it is going to be tough. Now all four S's will be out, and uh, both blanks out as well. The pool does not look superb, so it's going to take a big draw or maybe a, a huge hitting Q play unseen to uh, to Zach to get back in. Now we know that, that Mac, Mac also has the big has Q play, Q, and it's yeah. going to have a huge Q play as well. Lacquer or Clacker, L A C Q U E R or C L A Q U E R, both play down to that R for over fifty points. I guess the so nice thing is, exactly. sorry, go ahead. go ahead. Well, the nice thing about lacquer is you could put ED, you know, lacquered. So if he makes a 50 point play, you know, you could get even more back and open a new bingo line to maybe give yourself a chance. But you can hear how I have to keep adding words like maybe because the task ahead of Zach is really difficult here with this score. And D-E-E-I-I-N-N -N post bingo draw three sets of duplicates is not the, the one he was looking for. Mac is almost certainly going to play Clacker here. I sincerely doubt we'd see him play Lacquer, knowing that it takes the ED behind it. He doesn't want to open up that possibility. Mac is too good. Uh, I can't imagine anything but Clacker comes down, and I can't imagine he spends more than an additional 20 seconds before he does that. Right. I wasn't sure if Clacker took the ED, so this could be another chance, maybe even just to steal a few spread points late in the game by Mac. Uh, he might, if he draws ED, he might be able to get it by Zach. And I could see Zach trying it here. Um, I I bet neither player knows what this word means. We, we know what lacquer is, like you would coat something uh, like after painting, but I don't think either of us know what clacker is, so I could see Zach trying the ED, especially because holding E, I, I, N, N, you would want a D in the triple lane because you could end words in I, N, E, D, for example. So let's see if uh, he makes that attempt. I would do it. I would, Absolutely. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even if it I'm only taking very plausible, it? Sure, like it's it feels like one of the only ways for me to get back into this game. Exactly. Again, the score widget a little bit behind, but we've got 278 to 378. So exactly a 100-point deficit for Zach. He's going to need a huge score, and then he's going to need a bingo, probably, to have any shot. Uh, play like D-E-N-I from the D and Rodeo, just playing off E-N-I. is it kind of rolling over and dying. You know, right. Even if you draw your bingo next turn, you'll play it under Artsier for 62 or whatever. You lose. So I, I, in this situation, would try the phony. I'm certain Mac knows, but right. uh, whatever. But you, you still have to try it. it. And it hurts your spread, but you still have to try. And the Deadly Gamesman in the chat brings up a great point. Like maybe me, he would have played Lacquer over Clacker, just not being 100% on Clacker. And I saw both options, and I was pretty sure on Clacker. But if I were uh, sitting against either one of these two players, I would freeze up a bit, and I could see myself playing Lacquer which would lead to lacquer and lead to possibly not winning the game. So the power of word knowledge can never be underestimated. And that is really one of the main reasons why we see Mac with that very snazzy 2102 rating. Yeah. Wow. What a solid way to start our tournament. You know, it's uh, it's late It's 7 PM already and there's three games today. So they won't be done till about 10 PM. Um, it's late. I'm sure a lot of these players have had a long day of travel, of driving, of checking into hotels, and uh, we've seen some high, high-level scrabble anyway. 
mental fatigue is very much a thing in this game. Um, it is tough to keep things, you know, operating and to keep your emotions in check across a long tournament. But uh, so far, we've seen a we've seen a great game, and I love this idea by Zach. A bingo yeah. underneath Artsier is not going to score enough, but hey, if you draw exactly the right stuff, and specifically we're looking for an R, that's the only letter left in the pool that we can put after Dine. Um, if we draw an R, we might be able to get our way back in it. Now, again, us at home. We know Max got that R, and Zach's going to have no chance. But knowing what he knows, he's played a very good game to try to catch back up, to try to give him any fighting chance. And he's just not getting the good stuff to get back in. Yeah, and if anyone has ever seen Zach play Anagrams, it's like an after-hours game that people play at tournaments, he is one of the very best. It's like playing with someone like Noah Walton. Zach is finding 12-letter words. He's extending words like you can't even imagine. It just shows you how quick of a mind he has, and he has been steadily rising, and now we find himself right on table one to start this uh, big word cup with the $60,000 in prize money. I was very excited to play my first word cup last year in Chicago, and you're mentioning how it's such a grind. I really started to feel it about day three, day four. You know, you have so many fun friends at these tournaments that you end up staying up later than you should and you don't get that much sleep, but then you have to play about seven games of high quality Scrabble every day, and it really starts to, to get to you, even for someone uh, who comes in very prepared and maybe even very experienced. And you can never take a turn off. Joey Kravchik at, at uh, the Nationals last year ended up missing the finals by a few spread points. And if he had just played a few end games, you know, a little bit more correct and salvaged every spread point he could, he would have been in the finals and instead uh, he, he finished third. So you can never take a turn off, but sometimes you need to take a turn off uh, for right. your mental energy. It's tough to balance these things and uh, it'll be very interesting. We've got this big tournament this, uh, this week and in two weeks, another big tournament in Vegas. Several of these players are playing both and we'll see what kind of rust uh, we start to see as more and more and more games get played. And Mac and is now picking up the F... H. Okay, so there's no S's left in the bag. Uh, he he considered if there was anything hooking Dine, but he knew he had the last hook there, so he doesn't have to worry about it. He's going to leave himself with a strong leave here and hope to rack up spread points if he can get a late bingo. The other thing that's nice about this play for Mac is to Zach, is this a fish? Does he have great tiles, or did he have seven consonants? Uh, right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to make of that. So Mac could sneak out some extra spread points here. Zach's probably got to take the gamble like, ooh, he might have some garbage. I'm going to take a shot. And Mac leaving himself a very bingo prone leave, you know, could have had the ability to hit him back. With what he's pulled, that's not going to happen. But uh, neat little play there. I think if the score is now, he's down 102. He has to accept that he's lost this game. Uh, Mac is too good. There's not enough time to get two bingos down. I don't see any path to victory. So as much as it hurts to give up on a game, uh, like you said, those spread points can make all the difference. I know my friend Bryn Bowen, he won Division Two at Nationals by about five spread points. Uh, and he was like, it could have been a math error, right? Like it, it, he could have actually lost if all the math scores had been done correctly through the 31 games between him and I believe it was Bradley Whitmarsh who finished in second just behind him. So uh, really crazy how after so many games it can come down to, did you think about that end play in a game that was already decided? Because I know I have a tendency of being a bit lazy if uh, the game is already out of reach one way or the other. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's a trick game and, or a tricky game in these long tournaments especially add extra layers to it both the short and long-term game. I know some players, Ori Swift showed us a good example of this in the early bird this morning. Um, he'll challenge a word even if he's 98% sure it's good if it costs him the game. And it cost him 100 spread points or so, but he, he didn't care. He decided to right. challenge it, take his shot, eat the cue, lost a bunch of spread. But some players will play that way. Uh, some will throw in the towel a little bit earlier and, and try to start getting points back a little quicker. Yeah, and uh, a five-game early bird is very different than a 31-game main event, although in a five-game early bird, you're more likely to be tied at the top, so it actually spread matters even more in that sense. The difference is, of course, people care more about winning a 31-game tournament because of the big 
$10,000 first place prize here, which we love to see. And a big thank you to John Shree for his generous. I think we lost Jared for a minute, but uh, yeah, thank you to John Shreve for the generous donation to the prize fund to make this tournament uh, as cool as it is and draw all these high level players out. Uh, Zach had a cool opportunity. He could play NAV through the A and Art Seer, just six points, but hey, if he gambles that Max's last play was indeed seven consonants, NAV takes a back E, maybe he could have bingoed with the X for a hundred, but I think he does the right thing here rolls over, accepts that he's lost the game, and starts trying to salvage the spread points. Uh, Vixen's a good way to do that. I'm back. Uh, we got Jared back. Excellent. Okay, sorry about that. And what did I miss? Whose turn is it here? Zach just played Vixen, um, and okay. we're back on Mac. There we go. So Mac has four minutes here to figure out his best uh, end sequence. We'll see that Zach has Natal on his rack. I think there's another five in that rack, something that would end in N for Nan. So I think Mac can look for his own now sequence here, perhaps through the PI where he could score a lot of points. Something like raping would set up R-O-U-E to go out into. I don't know if there's a second spot. Uh, what are you seeing here? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, not, a, not a lot of good options. Um, maybe using the V in Vixen would be a good way uh, to try to get back or to try to score some points out of this. Uh, Quackle has a similar idea to what you recommended. It likes Urping, U-R-P-I-N-G, oh, yeah. and Orpin, O-R-P-I-N. Um, as, as plays through there. Um, Erping yeah, the latter would be A-G-U-E, so that would probably have two spots. I would imagine that would be its thought. Erping yeah, holds A-E-O. I'm not seeing a place to play those after that play, but hey, maybe you've got so many points out of OVA through the V that it, that it doesn't matter. Right. Um, yeah, I don't oh. see where the O-A-E would go either. He's almost gotten a lock zone through the disconnected NLX. That would be really wow. fun to set up as a sneaky out, but uh, not quite. That would be very impressive. First of all, to have it. Second of all, to find it. And third of all, just to play it for the flash. Sometimes maybe, maybe not an event with this much money on the line, but sometimes it's fun to see the content play come down. Not necessarily the best play in a game that's already out of reach. Yeah, just, just flex it, right? Exactly. Uh, but not quite. Yeah, Quackle prefers erping to anything else. Uh, we've run the sim several times and we're getting slightly different things each time. But uh, yeah, it, at this point, it's definitely max game. And it, it's a bummer too. Zach just barely broke 300 points and we saw him play a great game. Wow. So, you know, sometimes that's just how Scrabble is. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I play really poorly and win and other times I feel like I play really well and lose. and. You just have to stay level-headed and understand that uh, the luck will even out over the long term, and you just have to let it roll off your shoulder and move on to game two. No matter how much you lose by in a game, you can only get one loss. Yeah, just make the right play every turn. It's all you can really do. Think as hard as you can, make the right play, and uh, hopefully the rest falls into place eventually. But you got to hold on to your emotions. It looks like Rouge is what Mac was thinking about, uh, probably beneath NA and the R of Artsier. Uh, that would leave AN, which would certainly have a few spots to go out. He's coming down on 55 seconds, but uh, he'll, he'll make his play pretty quickly, just trying to get every spread point he can, make sure he's not missing any outs that uh, Zach may have. Yeah, we've mentioned how you can go to uh, the wordgamesplayer.org uh, to learn more about Wigpo. You can also go to letsplayscrabble.com to see upcoming events. Uh, a big tournament coming up in October in Lake George, New York. I will be there. We'd love to see you there as well. Mac now has 20 seconds. He's got to get something down. He's going to play roping up top, uh, leaving UEA, which would form Uria. Uh, I'm not seeing a second spot, but just Ave through the V would score nicely for him if it stays open. 
yeah, LUX would be an out after that. Um, was... Oh, so he's going to play Avant. That's smart. Nice. And uh, yeah. then Mac is going to be able to go out with Urea. The objective is always to try to go out before your opponent in these situations. Not always, but almost always. And uh, Mac is indeed going to do that here. So what a good way to start this tournament off. Round one, Zach with a tough luck loss to the best player in the world. Uh, one of the best players in the world, Nigel, would like a word. Um, and Mac with a very solid demonstration of uh, what to do when you draw the stuff. Uh, very, very solid, well-played game. Really only one even marginal mistake that, that I see of a uh, paw versus waif. And uh, just, right. wow, good stuff by two young young stars of the game. And I hope that our producer live on the scene, Sean Abbasi, uh, is telling Zach how well he played. Because I know you can it can feel frustrating. He might think he missed a lot more than he did. He played great. So uh, thank you to Sean behind the scenes, making everything happen so smoothly. And also a big thank you to Noah Slavkov, who is updating our Quackle uh, program, which is the program that runs simulations to let us figure out what the computer might play in different situations. And uh, Matt has been regularly updating us with the results of the Quackle, thanks to Noah's updating of that program. So thank you to both those guys, and of course to Josh and Kieran, who have run so many good events. And now for them to take on this massive event, the World Cup, with I think about close to 300 people, uh, $60,000 in prizes, and it's just going to be a great five days of top-level Scrabble. Yeah. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button to the Let's Play Scrabble YouTube channel. The entire Word Cup will be brought to you on this channel, as well as a bunch of additional content. So if you haven't done that yet, make sure you do that for us here. One yeah, more person uh, I think deserves a thanks for this tournament, and that is the late, great Annette Tedesco. Uh, I, did, I talked about her earlier today, but there's not enough nice things to say. Annette started doing tournaments in Albany, New York over the 4th of July decades ago, and every year would host a big event, invite players to stay at her house. Her and her sons would hold a big barbecue on her house, which is right on the Hudson River. Uh, just a great, great time for all tournaments who ever got a, spot, uh, a chance to play. She did pass a few years ago, but this tournament lives on, and this year it is in its biggest and best form ever. None of this would be possible without Annette, and I'm sure anybody who's played one of Annette's tournaments uh, knows just what a pillar she was for Scrabble. Uh, Mac yeah, confirming from our producer that he did know Clacker and chose it defensively because uh, he knew Lackard took the ED and Clacker did not. So exactly what we thought, demonstrating no surprise there. Word knowledge, no surprise. Uh, he, it's just a clinic every single time you watch him play or hear him think. I love that story like about Annette opening up her home to letting people in. Uh, there's so many great people in the scene. I've made so many friends across. North America. If you're looking to come to a tournament, come with an open attitude, uh, the love of the game, and just be friendly. And I'm sure you'll leave with not only a few wins under your belt, but also many friends. Absolutely. Great, great sub community full of a lot of great people. If you like nerdy pursuits, you are in the right place. A lot of lovable nerds who will show you the love as well. Uh, all right. It looks like game two, we're going to feature Jackson Smiley versus Joe Edley. So Jackson is Ooh. the uh, the previous winner of this tournament. He won the 10 grand last year. And Joe Edley, as I'm sure most people are aware, uh, many times has won a national championship. He's got, what, three or four under his belt. Um, so that's going to be a great game for us to watch. For right now, we're going to cut to a quick intermission as those players get seated. But y'all don't go anywhere. We'll be back very shortly with more Scrabble tonight. Two more games from the WGPO Word Cup in Albany, New York. See y'all soon. Nice.
All right, and we are back. Our next game is going to feature Jackson Smiley, another school Scrabble champion, versus Joe Edley, as I teased, a multi-time national champion. Uh, we're just going to give a quick pause as we try to get Joe's rack cam uh, reset. Looks like it got knocked over just a little bit, and of course we would like to know what tiles are on Joe's rack as the game goes on. So uh, we'll give our esteemed uh, stream coordinator, Sean Abbasi, just a moment to get that uh, fixed and uh, we'll have some Scrabble action underway. Again, Jackson, the winner of this event last year and the $10,000 that came with it versus Joe Edley. Uh, this will be a, a good, good matchup. It and certainly Jared, I will. Um, yeah. I was mentioning last game how impressive it was that Mac was over 2,100 with the rating and Jackson himself over 2,100, a strong Wigpo rating on the merit of winning this tournament last year. I had the pleasure of driving with Jackson from Toronto to Chicago on the way to this tournament and was so happy to see him win that big prize. He uh, has put so much work into this game over the years. He's put so much work into helping other people improve and it was a long awaited payoff. Absolutely, yeah. Jackson, uh, more than almost anybody out there, except maybe Mac Miller, loves to go back over games and positions, always happy to discuss them, give his thoughts and insights. And one of the big strengths of Jackson's games, too, is, is he's very creative, but he's also open to feedback. Some other players get very stubborn. Oh, no, I liked this play. And uh, regardless of what you say, I think my play was better. And Jackson definitely listens to the wisdom and insights of a bunch of other people. Um, to help him mold and build his game. And I hope we get to see some of that patented creativity as well from Jackson. Uh, he sees a lot of possibilities, and you'll notice he does some weird stuff with his leads sometimes, but that's because he sees he can make this extension, and uh, it's going to be game-changing if he's able to. Absolutely. We have uh, two ears and one mouth, so listen more than you hear us uh, speak, and I think it'll work out for the best. Jackson will be going first in this game. He's holding the bag right behind his freshly bleached hair. Always a new look with Jackson. One of the best parts of him being on stream, we get to find out what his latest tattoo and uh, choice of hair is. Today he's got the blonde hair with the black cap. And he's got uh, yeah, a blank. Yeah. Uh, Joe appears to be going first. F-K-Q-N-O-O-T, oh, not what you'd like to see on your first rack. And Joe is going to exchange. It looks like Joe keeps knocking that little uh, contraption that is pointing on his rack. He may need to be advised to uh, slide his chair back just a smidge or, or otherwise try not to knock that because uh, we're going to have issues seeing his rack all game. Though we did get a nice little profile of Jackson for a minute. Yeah, um, Joe's been playing for so long, way before streaming Scrabble uh, was a thing. And then through the glory years when it even uh, showed up on ESPN. He's won three championships, as you said. Uh, he's been featured in Word Freak, the biggest piece of literature in Scrabble history, written by the great Stefan Fatsis, who's going to give a keynote address here at this event. So if you're live, you get the, the beauty of that. Um, but why don't we go right over to Jackson's rack? He's going to want to play off the J, uh, but there's no real way to do it without playing just J-E-E, -E, I would think. So that doesn't look great. Do you exchange Here to play bird, beg? I, beg is nice and defensive here. It keeps things tight, keeps the board closed. Don't really want to hold the J with the blank. The blank is more a bingo tile and the J more a scoring tile. But you also don't want to play jeer holding B, G blank. Um, no, a tricky jeer. and you don't want to burn the blank to play jebel. So I'm not quite sure what I would do. Beg, maybe. Um, I, I think he's looking like at grab. That looks bad. That looks pretty nice. He had G-R-E-B-E, -E, uh, another option for him, uh, holding just J blank. Um, if you're going to string one E out, the second one isn't any more dangerous than the first, really. Um, but Beg does give Joe the R, which is going to increase his bingo chances. Though after an exchange six, he's got a mostly random rack. But we don't know exactly what he's got. Um, yeah, it looks like we've got Joe's camera a little corrected. He will just have to get a message to him without interrupting the game that... Uh, he keeps knocking that camera up and down. It's all that Tai Bo or uh, Tai Chi that he's so famous for. Yes, yes. So Jackson is going to play uh, Greb Grieve. I'm not sure how you pronounce that word, but I know it's good in Scrabble. 
Um, I, I would have kept things a little bit tighter with Beg, but I think there's certainly merit to both plays there. Um, though I think this is a, a good learning situation. A lot of people, I think, would have just played Jeer here and given up a lot of points back to the opponent and held the unsynergistic BG. Maybe that's not something you want to do. Maybe it is. Uh, it's not what Jackson would have done here, but uh, Scrabble's a game about style a lot, and it seems like Jackson's style would be to play off a little bit more of these tiles and see where that J takes him next turn. Yeah, it's not what I would have played either, but it's not to say it's the wrong play. Um, Joe here is going to have to use as many of tiles as he can to try and draw into a nicer rack going forward, so he'll play off Penner, uh, holding BR, and Jackson's drawn the second blank. Uh, there's a bit of a glare on his rack. I'm having a bit of trouble reading all seven tiles. I definitely see two blanks, a J-R-O, and, and now I see two Ts. Okay, so something like Jodder, if he doesn't have a bingo. Um, uh, just play Jodders and Grebs, then. Oh, right, because he has, yeah, exactly, ERS. Excuse me. Um, He's also going to be looking for maybe a compound word that can get him to the triple word score. I don't think he's going to find it. Yeah, he's got two bingos. Oh, three death boards. Look minutes. at that from Adam D. Yeah, jet ports. Jet ports. We like that. Okay, wow. So Jackson jet ports is going to be a double double for about a gazillion more or less. Uh, 102, if my math is right. And uh, uh, that's going to be a, just a killer. I'm honestly surprised Jackson hasn't played it yet. It's really tough to see. One thing he's going to want to do, he's writing down stuff on his sheet, uh, writing down the uh, words in order alphabetically. What he would probably do is, because it's hard to think about both blanks, you might want to declare one of them as an S already. And then it becomes a lot easier just to find the last tile, the P for jet ports. If you're trying to find both tiles at the same time, it can be difficult. So I find it's really important to sort of anchor one of those tiles. You might think an I might balance that rack, or an S, of course, like we're saying, is always good. And he's finding it. Um, this is a huge find by one of the best players in our game. So Greb, definitely an interesting play, and it's going to net huge benefits for him as he crushes 102 points. Joe can't be all that thrilled by this. Um, Jotters was another bingo, and also Jog Trots through the G, J O G T R O T S. Uh, but Jet Port's easily the highest scoring as it hits both double word squares at once, 102 points. And uh, Joe can't be feeling super good about that, staring down a deficit of 10 to 122 with both blanks. Yeah. Already played. I saw a bit of a shake of the head, but he took it pretty well. I know they were roommates last year in Swillins, that tournament that Mike Barron runs out of his home in uh, New Mexico. Uh, so they definitely know each other pretty well. And I think what he was also frustrated about is he didn't get a U to play something like Bunkered, or an A maybe would form be Darken. Uh, so his tiles, again, are covered. I think his hands are just in the way. There it is now. Uh, I'm not sure if he would have had a bingo with an I or an O, but he definitely knew that he was close to bingos. Um, I did just have the opportunity to watch him stream. He streamed with you, and it was really fun to see the way a legend of this game for about, four, what, four decades now, how he really analyzes each play and how strong he is at finding these words. Yeah, yeah, and I think Joe's big claim to fame is Back in the 1970s, he studied words the old-fashioned way. He got a dictionary and went through and hand-wrote lists of words and hand-wrote alphagrams and studied them on flashcards. But I think what he did with his strategy that set him apart from other experts at the time is he's one of the pioneers of uh, rack balancing and rack management. Uh, back in the 70s, turnover was king. Try to play as many tiles as I can beat you to those blanks and uh, bingo with them. And I'm going to win the game that way. And Joe, I think, was one of the pioneers of, well, no, let's hold on to the A and the E and the R and the T and just try to draw bingos. I don't need a blank. I'll just get a seven-letter word. And I think that set him apart, and that's why he's won as many championships as he does, as he has. I think he's won in, what, three or four different decades as well. Um, so definitely a lot of history and a lot of uh, knowledge from, uh, from Joe. I believe he's won three national championships, the most after anyone but uh, 
a non-North American, actually, Nigel Richards, the best player of all time. And I know that because Will Anderson, uh, Wanderer15, just released a great YouTube video about Joe Edley and this phenomenal uh, play that he, uh, game, not play, uh, it was a series of plays in a row that let him beat Brian Capoletto for a big championship. And I really encourage people to look for that video. Will's been getting hundreds of thousands of views on all of his recent videos, and he's really amassed quite the following. So if Will was the one who brought us here, uh, you here to us today, we really appreciate that. And Will is, I believe, playing in the Collins field in this event, if I'm not mistaken. I believe he's playing Collins here and then in Vegas in a couple of weeks. I think he's signed up to play TWL right now. So that'll be, uh, that'll be interesting. Good luck to Will on all of that. Uh, Joe has set up Knob here, K-N-O-B, and I feel like that has to be a mistake um, if he ends up playing it just because it knocks out the big S hook on G-R-E-B-E. You can't do that if you're down 112 points already. So uh, I think, you know, a, a play, foregoing several points and playing K-O-B instead would probably be a better idea. Now, Joe doesn't have an S, so maybe it's not as big a concern to him that he knocks out the S, but at some point you're going to need to draw an S, right? So uh, I just interesting don't love what there. it does to the board at all. It also takes out the R a bit, although I guess IER words would still fit there. Um, he's definitely going the full equity route. R-E-E-D was about as strong as he could have left there. So there's definitely merit to what he did. Um, I know a lot of the players from... Uh, who have been playing for so many decades, they really like leaving equity. They really like bingoing. Uh, you commentated with Lisa Odom this morning. I know she's always fishing off a couple of tiles, getting those bingos down. And look at that. Look what Joe drew. So wow. um, we'll let you in the chat try and find some seven and eight letter words with those tiles. But first, we definitely want to look over at Jackson's rack. Uh, it looks like he has orangey setup. I don't know if that plays. Uh, maybe he's hard just... and get ports. Okay. Yeah, it does. It would slot a Y in the triple lane, but a Y is definitely not the most dangerous tile you could put there. At least as far as tri uh, triple triples go, you could definitely have a lot of eights ending in Y that would really hurt. Going back to Joe's last turn for a minute, if you are going to keep D-E-E-R, play Bonk. Right? Right. It's the same score. Ah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he knows something we don't about an S hook. Maybe he's scared that Jackson has it, but with the deficit, you can't play scared. I don't know. Uh, anyway, we'll stick with Jackson's turn. Uh, Connor, C-O-N-N-O-R, I don't think is good in this lexicon. Sunny stands out, S-O-N-N-Y, um, from the S in, uh, in jet ports. Could be an option as well. Uh, AGO Connor Matt, is good. Connor is good. Oh, he has a G, yeah. not a C. It's so tough to make those out sometimes. Um, now it goosey. looks like he's setting up uh, Gooey. Goosey through the S and Jet goosey. ports. Right, okay. Yeah, that looks like a strong play. It really um, doesn't give a lot back, even though it's starting to open a bit more of the board, um, because bingoing under the G can be a bit difficult, because you can only put an I or an O beneath it, and above it you can only put an A. So that looks like a nice way. He didn't like keeping two ends, but I think any play he uh, was going to make there was definitely going to have some sort of a drawback. Yeah, Goosey, I think, is, is what you've got to do here. It does open things a little bit, but G's not as dangerous as some other letters you could string out. I, I think that's a fine play. Um, probably what I would have done in this situation as well. It blocks a lot, too. Um, the definitely easier bingos to spot, at least, the ones that I had seen all seem to have been blocked through the T or down uh, parallel to the E, just something like readers. In the chat, I see people found arrested, drearest. So we challenged the chat to come up with bingos, and they stepped up to the plate. Uh, is there any bingo that plays here? No. Jackson blocked everything all at once, and Joe has no available bingo. So an incredible rack thwarted this is a crushing now, blow for joe if two straight games we've really seen it when the, they're going against the best player here over 2100 and the player gets out to an early lead burning both those blanks and 
they manage to somehow make these plays that are taking out the bingo lanes they need to come back. This is just, it's like playing against a wall in tennis. You just feel like you can't win. If Joe had played Bonk, he'd yeah. have <laughs> red ears readers. and readers in two different spots. He'd have it with Bonks, he'd have it with Greaves. Um, but no, no, I just, I, I think that's a strange, strange play. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a mistake. Yeah, really and it looks like a small mistake, but it's actually fairly large when you think about already being down almost 100 so early in the game. You need to leave every last avenue open. And he'll play grad, which puts that D in the triple lane. We've seen that a couple times today. It's the sort of tile you want there to get a sort of 80-point bingo to bring yourself back into the game. And that's definitely where Jackson's going to look to obstruct the board on this turn if he can. Yeah, Goanna jumps out right away. G O A N N A um, holds D T. Uh, there's going to be similar plays. Nothing that blocks a spot like that ever really scores that well. Um, but you can't leave that D sitting there, not with the lead that Jackson has. Um, I'd be surprised if he doesn't do something to address it. It's not easy to, for him to do it there. Like he could play something like Dang D A N G just through that A, but. The D uh, in grad would still stay open. Like you said, Goanna, that definitely takes out a lot, but then it's putting some floaters out into space. Uh, if Joe had a bingo that went through the N or down to the G, through the O or the A. So it's definitely not fully obstructing things. So the play of grad by Joe after getting his bingos blocked uh, was a good fighting move, and it'll keep him battling in this game as Jackson decides how to try and address the spot just opened. Or... Alternatively, Jackson can choose not to do that at all. Jackson can just start scoring points as fast as he can and hope even if Joe pulls one or two things, he doesn't catch up. He's got decent plays. They're sneaky and hard to find. But from that blank P, he can play a Pagod, P-A-G-O-D, or he can play Panto. Uh, Pagod's going to score 26. Panto's going to score 20. Both of those are definitely better than anything else that I see on this board in terms of scoring points. Um, it opens things even further. Pagod puts another D in that triple yeah. line. But, hey, both the blanks are out. They score a lot of points. And even if Joe Bingo's for 90 or 100 down there, well, hey, if you're ahead by 150, you don't care. Yeah, it's tough to see when the blank is on the board because you, you sort of forget that it's available. Just like Goosey in the last play, I didn't see it because I wasn't thinking about the S being there. So first of all, we'll see if he can find it. Second of all, if he decides to play it, um, the aggression could definitely be warranted here. And uh, it, it, it scores more. The leave isn't necessarily so great, but if you go up by 120 or whatever, you're up basically two bingos. He's gonna play Gonad. That blocks a lot, but it still leaves bingos from the D to the bottom right triple word score. So, um, it's not a perfect block, but he, he played the equity game here. Look at that strong leave, A-N-T. So synergistic. Those tiles work well together. Yeah. And Joe, I don't know if he has P-R-E-V-S-E-S. -E -E Vespers is valid. Exactly. It doesn't quite fit. It'd be cool if you could pluralize Penner and Knob. It would play if Joe played Bonk. Uh, I'll stop saying that now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but wow. Uh, Vespers. Yeah, not quite going to yeah, fit. Small for mistakes Joe. can compound. Uh, Previses almost fits, yeah. but there's no I anywhere on the board. Uh, he's close a lot. He's been doing well. It's really very much a mirror of the last game. Uh, staying alive, trying to keep equity, and just the lanes keep getting taken out. When you're playing against a strong player, especially in this smaller dictionary, uh, it's very smart to start trying to control that board. And with the blanks out, it's a tough challenge to come back. Joe going to play pervs here. I think Veeps is a pretty similar play just in terms of what it accomplishes. Um, I'd be more inclined to hold the R than the E, just looking at the, the plethora of vowels left in the bag at this point. But that's what Joe's going to do, pervs, and uh, we'll see what he draws, potentially, maybe. Oh, yeah, we're trying to get that rat cam fixed again. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Jackson, also, I think, has a no-brainer play of calling. Oh. Yeah, 
Go Alex ahead, Jared. What are you saying about Veep? Uh, the V, you can bingo through it a lot more than the P if you put it up in space. Uh, the V isn't a great tile, but it's actually a surprisingly good bingo tile. So I like Veeps also for that reason. Uh, Jackson sees calling here. It takes out so much of the board. Bingo in, I mentioned how IER bingos were available uh, to the E of Greb and the G that he himself had opened the turn before. So Joe's going to find himself in an even more difficult position, but when he moves his hand away from that camera, we will see, he looks like he's close, E-E-E-N-S-T, and I think a U is the last title. Oh, really wish he'd play Veeps now. Yeah. <laughs> give, uh, terrain, tenures, neuters, retunes. Oh, dang. Dang, he does, oh, that's a V, okay. Oh, so he is evenest. Uh, does that fit, is he? Oh, he's just, he's fixing the rack, I think. I think I can see Sean in the background, just uh, making sure that they know that we are watching. And I know it's hard for Joe. He's so focused on winning this game. <laughs> You're not thinking about what we're looking at. He's thinking about what he's looking at. And what he's looking at is, what is this, the third bingo on his rack that doesn't play? Vespers, Evenist. And I think he had one before too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, readers and red ears and yeah, exactly. all that. Oh, now he'll play Veeps. Okay, <laughs> neat. <laughs> um, yeah, Joe's Joe's got to score points and try to get bingos down uh, if he's got any shot in this game. But bingo opportunities are going to get harder and harder to come by. From the D in Grad is still going to be a possibility. To the G in Grebe is another big possibility. Um, but But quickly, bingo spots are going away. And Veeps really takes away even more. Um, he used the S that would really help him bingo, and he put the V that is going to make it really hard to access the top left. I mean, at some point he could play for six, just Eve or Ave or something to open that top spot, but he's behind too much to play slowly like that to get back. And he's drawn another uh, bingo onto his rack that I believe doesn't... Oh, no, it doesn't play. Uh, so, Joe... <laughs> is having a homeless problem here. Homeless bingo, a no-go. We have many terms for them, and I'm sure Joe has some less uh, than PG terms for them at this moment, because he must be very frustrated. This is a, a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, man. I, I don't think I've ever seen four consecutive unplayable bingos on a board where there are some lines still available. Right. And he's so no. close to detainee, right? Like he's almost yeah. fingering yes. and not quite. And now Jackson knows that. He knows that D is the biggest lane he has to address. The G, if you hit it, it's opening up a lot back for Jackson. The D, if you hit it, it's not really giving back as much. Plus it's putting a word in the triple lane that you can hope to hit again later. And Jackson leaves such a strong leave, A-E-T-I-S. Uh, he'll draw the, draw the X when you're ahead. Uh, you don't necessarily need a bingo. You want to just keep scoring. If you can keep getting down 30, 40, uh, even 20, 50 points, and with that X next to the I and coin, he's looking very poised uh, to win this game. Uh, yeah, wow. What a great play by Jackson. A convenient play as well. Cleans up that rack, knocks out the D. Just sometimes, sometimes Scrabble's nice, man. You do all of it, everything you wanted to do, all in one fell swoop. And uh, Joe, man, I just, I feel the frustration. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's it's such a bummer. I think this is, this might be where we see AVE through the V and Veeps just right. to try to make something happen up there. But the A isn't exactly as good as the E up there, but of course it balances your rack better. So it is what you'd have to play if that's the approach you're gonna take. I think uh, with Joe and with Zach, the, the game before, it can just be one bad move. Uh, we saw Wave not come down in the previous game, Bonk not in this one. And it's easy to complain about the tiles that don't work out after. But if you make even one suboptimal play, uh, the rest of it's really on you if you're going to play at this very top level and try and win like this big prize. So yeah. a bit of a tough break, but at the same time, there's just no excuses here. This is the very top uh, board one here live and it hurts, but that's just what we put ourselves uh, out to when we, when we go for this challenge. 
And uh, there's a great documentary out there called Word Wars. It came out, I, I believe, in about 2000, 2001, but it's on competitive Scrabble. It follows four of the, the stalwarts of the game, including Joe Edley. If you haven't seen it, I just strongly advise you to find it online. But they say, hey, in this game, you can beat God if you get the right tiles. But all you can do on your end is play without making mistakes. Don't make mistakes. Don't sacrifice any points. Don't uh, close the board when you need to open it. Don't open the board when you need to close it. Just try to make the best play every turn, and eventually the right stuff's going to start to happen, or at least it should. Right. If you play against Quackle, like our top computer program right now, it's going to beat players basically uh, such a high percentage of the time, and that's because it doesn't make the big blunders. Uh, and missing a bingo or taking out an S hook like we saw here that you really need, that can really hurt. I think, is he going to just play XI? Yeah, he was thinking about Taxi, but no reason to st stack the TA up there. That sets up a front hook of Ada, a Greek letter. So if you play TA, you can put the E in front. That allows Joe to bingo. Holding yeast like Jackson is, is a nice strong leave. And Joe is running out of places to score. He doesn't have the I for an ING bingo. So we'll see what he thinks of doing here. Yeah, Nucleate would have played to the E, but Cawing just barely blocked that line as well, which is uh, you know what made that such a good play. Uh, sheesh. Man, unplayable bingos, unplayable sevens for four turns, and Nucleate doesn't quite fit here. Joe has been close, but no cigar over and over and over on this turn. We should mention that his last play of Airy really did nice things for the board. It takes three hooks, uh, the doctor's hooks, DRS. So I know that they're all going to know the S uh, and the R, I think. The D is probably the hardest of those hooks. Uh, we'll see if that comes into play later on. They're both very strong with their words, so I think they'll know it. But when you're at the board, even if you know a word, all of a sudden, if it gets in your head, you might not know it as strongly as you need to to play it in a difficult situation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd imagine both of these would see it, but you're right. It, it's possible that we could see it missed now or later. It's also one of those that, hey, maybe you see it and then you you forget about it later on. So I'd be right. surprised if either of these players miss it. They're both very strong, but uh, it's possible. And now Joe going to make the taxi <laughs> play. Jackson forwent um, for exactly the reason Jackson didn't do it, because it opens the board nicely. Uh, right. Jackson, I think, had a no-brainer of uh, W-R-Y through the R and pervs, but now instead he's going to have to play over, I think, something like W-A-S, uh, making Ta, Awa, and S X I S. Uh, I mean, that does set up a front S hook. Uh, there would only be one other S left, I believe, but Ta does turn to Staw, so it's not necessarily a perfect block there, especially if he were to use the S. He could play We, holding on to L-A-T-Y-S to, to keep that S, he could also play win and way, setting up his T. Um, I'd want to be counting T's on the board. I think three have been played, one's there, so there'd be two unseen. Uh, so he's got a few different options he could play here. He could also play something with yin, yin, and ya, maybe. That gives back a lot more. I don't think that's going to come down. But Yeah, if you play in a standard ex equity game, W-R-Y makes a ton of sense, or ya, uh, or way near the bottom. Um, but... I don't mind setting up the stall spot. Like, fine, if you're going to bingo with the last S, do it, and then the game's over. Like, the last S is gone, and the, the board's dead. And those bingos so, don't quite hit the double word score, right? It'll be one square short. So yeah. instead of the bingo scoring maybe 75, it might score 60, and you can live with that. Especially if you're scoring 45, like, uh, after right. WAS. Yeah, I think no matter what he does here, he'll be in a good position. Um, the even if he were to play Rye, maybe he's thinking about spread over the course of this tournament and thinking, you know what, the slate leave is just so strong. I'm going to win uh, basically every time here. I'm willing to sacrifice a bit of win percentage to try and really rack up the spread. I know Jackson is the sort of player who really wants spread early in the tournament, uh, probably more than almost anyone else in the field. So I could see him making the sort of play like that that isn't the play I would necessarily make. Yeah, no, Jackson, I think, is, is definitely the kind of player who would do that. Rye at the top would block what is clearly Joe's best play of Uric, U-R-I-C, setting up that dangerous C in a triple line. 
Um, so Joe wouldn't be pleased to see that. Joe would be forced to open the board a little more. And then as soon as he does, Jackson almost certainly to bingo with AELST. But, you know, just playing next to TA, making Ta with we or was scores so many points that uh, it's, it's hard not to do that. Uh, I think this is the same play I would have made here. I like holding the S rather than playing the right. S, even though we do get the additional 12 points or 11 points from it. Uh, Joe's immediately going to play Yurik as he totally should. Uh, worth noting that, hey, he finally didn't have bingos, but it's because he drew II into the U that he had right. to hold. And uh, man, it's just been uh, just been tough watching this game. And Jackson, he likes keeping the S there. It just gives him power. It lets him go to the Ta extension or the Airy extension. So uh, just when you have the lead, if you keep tiles that are scoring tiles or an S, even if your opponent gets those bingos down that they really want, you can just keep scoring 30 and the bingos won't even be enough to catch up. That's the power of finding a word like jet ports. I know it's a word we expected him to find, but we still can't underestimate how strong of a find that was on stream with two blanks. Um, it's it's a word I guess we know, but it's not a common word and it's not that easy to find. Uh, those compound words can be a bit tricky. So very well done by Jackson, who is putting himself in a very strong position here. He could play something like Coley, C-O-A-L-Y, a bit of a funny word, but uh, is in the dictionary and it would leave sit, which would still have him with that key S tile. Yeah, there's that, or if you want to be very aggressive, there's yin and yo. It sets up both the A and the T front hook for yin, but Joe currently has another homeless right. bingo, Aeolian, and uh, that would actually allow Joe to bingo back. Jackson, I'm sure, sees four unseen A's, two unseen T's in the pool, no P's for the pie and hook. Um, and probably because of that, he's going to play Coley. I'm, I'm certain Jackson sat and thought about it for just a minute. He loves to set himself up when he knows his opponent doesn't have the thing. But uh, it, it was so possible that Joe could have had the thing. No reason to take that risk. Uh, Coley, a very nice play for Jackson to put him up by almost 130. Yeah, there's no reason for him to be aggressive there. Just too easy to get burnt. Uh, taking out the big spot that Joe opened up, the triple lane with the C, you have to play there, I think, every time. And Jackson did it without too much thought. So Joe, with his fifth homeless bingo, uh, he, <laughs> what do you even do here? There's like one lane left, it's the G, so he's opening up a new lane, that makes sense. It's gonna be a hard lane to hit, but he needed to find a way to open it up, and that's the best way he saw on this board. Yeah, I mean, he's holding the IN to play to the G, um, so kind of setting up a little fake here. Uh, I, he has no intention probably of hitting that if he, if he draws it cool, but, uh, you know, I think he's, he's more looking at the ING spot, which would also open up a triple, triple, you know, that's, uh, that's probably his only shot. And at this point too, I, I've likely given up on this game. If I'm Joe, I'm now thinking <laughs> a little bit more about spread. Yeah. It feel great to get a bingo down. It feel great to pass 300 points, but, uh, you're just so far in the hole at this point. I don't. I don't know that it's worth even even continuing to try to win and instead just just try to make plays. I wouldn't be surprised if Joe next turn plays denial and airied. Um right. just kind of says let me let me just score now whatever. Uh it'll be a, a chance to see if he knows confidently that D hook. But Jackson could take out that spot. He knows that that spot is still alive for bingos. Um he probably doesn't want to burn his S, but he could play something like most there if he wanted to. Um, he could play Moat at the top, but that would give some probably an easier bingo lane back. I'm not really sure what the strategy is for Jackson here. Um, he probably wants to keep the S, probably wants to, he for sure wants to unduplicate the T's and probably wants to use his M here somewhere to score. Uh, I see a way to do all of that. Uh, omit yeah. underneath the Y and Goosey. Uh, doesn't really open anything. It blocks Aries' possibilities, and crucially, it still holds LST. Yeah, it's that only looks seventeen. Good. Yeah, it's only seventeen, but you're not scoring much. Moat just allows Joe to potentially bingo for for a lot more. I'd be worried about like a QUE bingo down relic or something. Is a so he's going to play Lada. So okay. even if Joe gets a bingo here, it won't be as dangerous. So he saw the concern that we were both having there, but. 
he's still like taking out that spot, knowing that a bingo through the triple could score times three. The airy spot's pretty obstructed already. Um, this makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A decent play. Most of Joe's bingos are going to give back, you know, a spot for Jackson to crush a triple word and won't score all that well, whereas something like Moat could give up the, the devastating 100-pointer that you're trying to avoid in this situation. Right. Um, so Joe continues to be near bingos. Uh, this time, I'm not seeing a 7 on his rack, but he is considering denial, and it is going to come down. So he's given up in this game. That is waving the white flag. Saving that crucial spread, who knows, maybe the spread that he's saving here will be the key uh, later on in this tournament. Yeah, that is the last in, so bingoing to the G is is going to be very difficult at this point. But uh, yeah, you just do what you got to do. It, maybe, maybe you luck into a ridiculous OR bingo that fits above pinners. You've got to try to score some points if you're Joe anyway in this game, so denial was a... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that that's totally reasonable. That's likely what I would have done here as well. And I think Jackson can play for equity here. He's up enough points. He doesn't have to be too worried. He could play Hilli, H-I-L-I, -I, leaving A-M-U-S, that S still going for that staw spot. Um, he knows that the Z is out, or the Z, um, so that could hit big through the L of denial. And I think for that reason alone, it's a good idea to play in the bottom right. Joe draws another, oh, he, a playable bingo this time. He's got Fritz's and Staw. Ooh. So, hey, That's Denial's nice. going to pay off here. Score a bunch of points. And, uh, oh, Hamuli, nice. Nice find, Jackson. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I We would have not the have computer programs, and he's finding the better play. So hats off to Jackson. <laughs> uh, hats on for Jackson, actually. He might take it exactly, off. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, Again, I'm not sorry. Looking more like a Montrealer right? every day I see him, so... <laughs> uh, the Montreal people always so stylish and up to date with their trends. Fritz's is going to come down. We'll see if Jackson holds this one. Uh, he shouldn't. He should know it's a noun, but it sort of sounds like maybe it wouldn't. The problem for Joe here is where the Z would be slotted, right? It would be right next to the triple lane. So even though he's getting this big play down, uh, it could be giving back a very easy 45 play in response. Yeah, fine. Play Fizz, and then I'll bingo from your F. It's the only shot I have. Yeah, it's what he has to do, and it's what... Oh, is he not... Oh, he's playing with the Z with Zen. That's kind of smart, too. Mm. He keeps his S here, knowing the star spot is important. Maybe seeing what I was saying, that his 65-point bingo could give back a 40-point play without trying. Uh, a lot of players would just quickly play that bingo. It's possible he wasn't sure of it, it's also possible he purposely forewent it. What do you think there? I'm going to guess that he bypassed it on purpose here. Um, I, I'm pretty sure Joe would know Fritz's at this point and just didn't want to give back the easy 50 to Jackson. Um, right. But I think Fritz's is the only way to maybe possibly win the game, though it's, it's also possible he was looking at the unseen pool, saw the Q and an F and an H and just not, not the best stuff there. So it, maybe he thought, I'm not, I'm not going to bingo after Fritz's again, so let me cash 50 now, and then maybe I'll bingo one more time. Um, I, I would uh, guess it was tactical rather than a I word knowledge. I think it was knowledge. tactical too. Um, he's close to Fuhrer's this time through that R, but there are some overlap problems. Uh, if he was scared of the Q, he gave back a huge Q spot, uh, also with these eyes out, too, on Jackson's rack. Neither player has uh, the Q at the moment. Uh, do you know how many tiles are unseen still? I think there's still probably... Nine. Nine unseen. I'll drop the whole... Nine unseen. Okay. Um, so it's running out of tiles for Joe to bingo twice. One bingo isn't even going to cut it here. Um yeah, I agree with you. I think he definitely had to play Fritz's, give up that point. And Jackson's not guaranteed, by the way, to have a play from the Z to the triple word score. But even if he did, then if the F is there, for example, like Fizz, he gets an 80-point play back, and then maybe he has a chance. So, so as a slight calculation error uh, on my part. If he plays Fritz's, I think there were only six in the bag. Oh, five okay. So bag. He, I think there were only five yeah, in the bag. So not so enough. He's not going to be able to bingo back. So that makes it even stronger. Uh, a very nice idea by Joe. 
and Jackson, knowing how many are left in the bag, he's thinking about tempo here, just wants to play off one, uh, sort of making Joe play off a couple, and then Jackson will have the tempo going right into the end game. Yes, you don't want to empty the bag. Uh, Joe could catch you with a lot on your rack. Jackson pulls the Q on his one tile draw. I think that was also part of right. what he was trying to avoid. But he is going to have QI for a gazillion, and he knew that that wasn't a possibility for Joe as he had the last two eyes in the game. So wasn't worried about Joe doing that. No, uh, the Q is actually a pretty nice draw for him. It can be devastating late in the game, but it could help him score quite a lot here. Um, it could even just help him take out the taw lane with QIS and kind of close most of the easy bingos. But because of that play of Lada, the board is open on the top and also uh, the G is open, but Jackson having the last eyes, Joe can't make an ING word, so that G is really not that helpful. Yeah, Joe gonna knock out the QI play, which I think you you almost need to do in that situation. Yeah, Jackson probably didn't have it last turn, but there's a 50-50 chance he drew it. Ruth scores a lot. Yeah, makes sense. Jackson probably playing QIS in Staw or QIS underneath Lotta. Um, he's got four and a half minutes to think about this end game, so we'll see if he, uh, you know, how much time he chooses to spend. Um, if he plays QI alone, he'll be left with Salmi or Salmi S A L M I making QI as well. So that's a good little out and two sequence. He probably sees that already. Right, and if that gets blocked, he could play males and Taw, for example. So, yes, so that's guaranteed to make a lot of sense. Uh, uh, and and me is not an easy word to see. It's a nice find by you uh, and Jackson, because I'm pretty sure if he played this, males doesn't quite fit under there, and uh, Lima, like the bean, that doesn't fit under there. So I think he must have seen Salmi to make this play in that spot. No, males is unblockable. Uh, with Ta, with Sta. With Sta, yeah, males is unblockable. Yeah, so yeah. Even if he no, no, I know we'll, that, but I'm uh, saying... Uh, to get the big points under the queue, I guess was my point. I see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a guaranteed out into QI holds males. He can't block males. We'll find out in just a moment if Jackson knows and saw Salmi. I know that Jackson studies fives by Alphagram or has in the past okay. at least. So he probably is aware that there are three in that set, males, Limas, and Salmi. Though we'll see how certain he is um, in, in just a minute. Salmi is just slightly better than males in terms of points. Yeah, he's looking very casual, not even really looking at the board. We saw Mac and Zach in the last game. I like that rhyme, by the way. Uh, really take their time on the last couple moves. Jackson just felt pretty confident. That looked pretty good. Maybe uh, could have used a bit more time, but I think that really looks like the, the right play. And when you find it that quickly, no reason not to just slap it down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I always like to take those extra couple minutes if I have them and stretch my legs. Right. I'm getting out. In the hallway, walking around, getting the blood flowing is important as well. Um, but yeah, not yeah. too much to think about. This is a, a definitely got to be the right end game sequence for him. I don't know why I said Males was unblockable. I forgot Joe has an S. I always forget what he's got when he covers up his rack like this. But uh, right, <laughs> uh, I already forget what he has. Oh, and the next game will be Joey versus Sam Hollington. So we've seen Joey in the chat. Uh, Joey finished, I think, third in this event last year. Uh, Jackson was winning, and then there was four of us uh, tied with the same number of wins, and Sid won the big $5,000 second place prize, and Joey and Ian, and then I think me. So it was quite the close competition last year. It'll be interesting to see uh, if the field is that tight at the end, or maybe one player will pull ahead and be Gibsonized early. The only way to find out is to stay tuned here on letsplayscrabble.com uh, here on the YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, post comments, ask us questions, follow all the related pages. There's tons of great Scrabble content out there and uh, tons of great people in the chat willing to answer any questions you might have. Uh, next game will be the last game of the day. We will be back on the air for y'all tomorrow morning. I'll, I'll get a confirmation on the start time. I want to say it's 9 a.m. I think uh, it's 9. I think tomorrow will be me and Heather McCall, if I'm not mistaken, yes, a fellow friend of mine from Toronto. 
So a few more NWL games, and then for those of you looking for some Collins action in the afternoon, uh, there will be a slate of, I think, three games. And we're also looking into possibly doing something over the lunch break with a special guest commentator. I won't say who it is. If you want to find out, you're going to have to tune in. Oh, that's exciting. I don't know who this guest commentator is or what it's going to be, but uh, I am excited to find out. That'll be fun. Exactly. Let's find uh, out if Joe plays Selma. Deep. And I think Selma is going to come down. There it is. Beautifully played by Jackson. Can we really say if he made a single mistake in this game? I, um, I there mean, was a couple of plays he played not the way we maybe would have wanted, but it was still a very consistent game from start to finish, I think. Yeah, Grebe and Gonad were two plays that were maybe a little confusing. And, and both of those are right. plays where I don't feel strongly one way or the other. And I think a lot of people won't feel strongly one way or the other. Do you play Beg? Do you play Grebe? Do you play G or Jeer? Um, and then Gonad, do you play Goanna? Do you play Gonad? Do you play Panto? Do you play Pagod? I don't know. Um, questionable plays, but I'm, I'm not going to call them mistakes necessarily because... Uh, well, A, I don't think I'm qualified, and B, I don't know that they were. Right. I agree with you. They don't quite look like the plays I would have made either, um, but it's hard to say that they're a mistake. I see Sean's pointing at Gonad, maybe uh, giving Jackson some of the feedback that we just shared. Always love to hear his advice. You were saying how, not just like Mac in the last game, Jackson's another player who loves to post-mortem. Post-mortem is the term we uh, used for discussing the game immediately after. Uh, you go through with your opponent, you say, on this turn, I had that, what should I have done? Do you like here? What do you have opened? If I played this, what do you have challenged? Stuff like that, uh, especially when it's two friends, like in this case, Jackson and Joe. Yeah. So uh, round three, again, Joey Kraftchik versus Sam Hollington. Joey, another 2100-ish player, another young gun who's very good at this game. And uh, maybe, if we're lucky, Joey won't draw both blanks and bingo a bunch of times in the first two turns and take a huge lead. <laughs> maybe we'll get a closer game of Scrabble. Um, or maybe Joey will quickly double blank Sam and we'll be bored again. Uh, I hope crossed. so, but I think one way or the other, it'll be a much faster game knowing how quickly Joey likes to play. Yes, absolutely. Joey can play very quickly. He told me before this tournament he really plans on slowing down and taking his time, but... I've also heard Joey quit playing Scrabble over a hundred different times and say things right. like this before. So I'll believe it when I see it and we'll get a chance to see it right after this. Uh, Jackson notes that he saw jog trots first and then found jet ports. A post-mortem, they're also saying the opening turn was tough to decide. I completely agree. I have no idea. I would have played beg and felt bad about it. Um, yeah, me too. So uh, we're going to take a quick commentator break. Uh, give me a little restroom time and a uh, time to get some water for my voice. That's done seven games today and got one more left to go. <laughs> we're hearing Joe was a bit exasperated with all the a unplayable bit. bingos. You think? <laughs> uh, but we're going to cut away for just a moment, and uh, we will be back as soon as we can get Joe and Sam settled down for the last game of the day. Hang tight with us, y'all. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, Matt and Jared will be back soon with Joe and Sam. See y'all soon.
All right, we are back and live. Again, we got Joey Kraftchik versus Sam Hollington coming up. And uh, as they bag the tiles and get ready to go, I want to take a moment to go through and recognize the winners of all divisions of the early bird. Uh, there were a lot of divisions. So Division J, Humberto Cruz won with a record of 4-1. and one. Division I, Senator Cheryl Kagan went undefeated 5-0. and oh. Division H, Brian Garnett took the cake at 4-1. and one. Division G, Marion Calabro at three and two, but got it on spread. There were four players at three and two in that field, including Trevor Seeley, Jane Geary, and Benjamin Ansel, dad of Zach Ansel. Division F, Paul Avrin, five and zero, oh, undefeated, plus six oh nine. Wow. Uh, Division E, Katya Lezen, four and one, plus one fifty five. Division D, Noah Kalis, four and one, plus nineteen. Division C, Annette Oberstad, a great poker player and an upcoming Scrabble player. Not surprised to see her win that one. She's really come up. Division B, Winter at 3-2, three plus 374. Division A, as we saw on stream, was Ori Swift edging out Narazis or Saint on spread. Uh, Division C of Collins was Charles, Charles Uzamere. Division B, Fidelis Olotu at 4-1, plus 188. And Division A in CSW was Matthew O'Connor. So congrats to all of our early bird winners. And uh, thanks for playing. We had a big turnout at the early bird with all those divisions. I think 47 players in total in TWL and uh, 18 or so more in, in Collins. Uh, so cool stuff. And congrats to all those. Plus, congrats to those who are winning today. Uh, got a couple questions from a couple different people in chat. Uh, what is the point of the four corners? Why are we putting the tiles in those squares five by five before the game? We do that because we want to make sure all 100 tiles are on the board. Uh, generally, the players who play on the board before you are supposed to square the tiles back up. But obviously, Jackson and Joe are huge jerks. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm sure they're not huge jerks. They just, uh, when you're on stream, you're on a different timeline, a different schedule from everybody else. And uh, I'm sure that's all that was. So Sam is going to go first in this game. And I uh, don't quite see that seventh letter. Were you able to see it? It's before another O, yeah. and it, that leads to a bingo. It's a tough one to know. It's not really a common word. Uh, yeah. We'll see if he Stuker. knows it. Yeah, a stucker, uh, one that stucks, a bundle of grain in a field for drying. drying. Now, Sam has really strong word knowledge. I think I've played him three or four times and i think i've lost about five challenges so if anyone can come up with this word i think sam has a pretty good shot at this uh he doesn't put the tiles in yeah. alphabetical order like some people do, do but he drew the st off his rack first and you know what that means that means yeah. a bingo is yeah. coming this is a fun play do you play stooker in the place where it scores the most points putting the K on the double letter and the S on the star ending just short of the triple? Or do you play conservatively as Sam has done here? I think in this case, if you're Sam, you know you're about uh, 200 rating points below Joey. Maybe you take the shot, set up the S right. hook. Although in this case, he definitely chose correctly as Joey also has an S on his rack. And Joey has to be upset. A, he got bingoed on. B, he's got six consonants. And C, he knows Sam could have played that in the other spot. And right. if Sam had chosen to, uh, well, dang, Joey could have crushed him back. Yeah, with something like Frumps, that would have scored uh, probably even more than the bingo. Uh, maybe not with the K multiplying on the first turn, but it would be close. So All right, now Dad, he's gonna... best to us. So which up. of you would have played S on the star, and which of you would have played Sam's placement? Tell us the truth. S on the star, E on the star. Right. So he is confident that frump, which sounds like it could be an adjective, takes an S, which it does. That's a nice play. Uh, another note on Sam I want to mention is that last year he had a great World Cup. I believe he won the class prize for the highest uh lower rated player in the top division so one thing you might be wondering is like in a 31 game tournament maybe about half the field has a chance to win against such tough people so to give the other people really something to fight for we give class prizes uh and it allows players like sam who can really compete but maybe not win a 31 game tournament still be able to cash in so great job by him i think trip pain was the other uh class prize winner in the top division there and another thing I wanted to point out is that 
Uh, Matt was just reading out the results from all the other divisions. So if you're intimidated by these words, Stoker and Frumps, and they just look so scary, come out to a tournament, believe me, uh, you'll be placed in the lowest division in your first tournament, and people in that division will be using mainly the words that you're familiar with. Uh, so don't be intimidated. Use this sort of as an example of the very best of the game, and we'll try and help you with the strategy, uh, even if you don't know some of these really strange words. I see some good banter going on. We were talking about the four corners earlier, and uh, uh, we were talking about how it's a stall tactic to run time off the clock. Yes, I'm under 40, but I do know what that is. That's the basketball tactic where you stall all game, the four corners offense, just pass it around over and over. It's the reason the shot clock exists now. Um, very different context in basketball, but uh, yes, I like that. <laughs> uh, Hoya, nice play by Sam, going to score very well. Uh, get rid of the O, the Y all together. A nice way to score well and play out of a, a kind of junky rack. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, it really blocks a lot of the floaters that Joey's going to want to use to get a bingo to come back into this game. So nice idea sure. there. It also sets up his M a bit above the Ho for Mo. So Yes, M-H-O. One, uh, one of those strange ones. Joey, again, six consonants on this rack, but, but the X might help him score a little bit. He's got locks, L-Y-E, and O-A-R, which isn't awesome, but is is fine. G-R-S-T can be a good leave if you're going to draw a couple vowels, or it can lead to a bunch of garbage next turn. Um, but I I think in this case, what we see, we see locks. Do you see anything beyond that, Jared? That's the best play I've seen so far. I'm still looking. I wouldn't have played as quickly as Joey does here. Whoa! Um, he's, whoa. whoa! Oh, I don't what like that. Doing? I much prefer locks. And I wonder if he just didn't see it yet. It's not necessarily the easiest overlap to see. It's not that hard. But I can't imagine seeing locks and then burning the S there. Why? That's wrong. That's, that's absolutely wrong. Locks, locks is only three fewer points. Hold the S. The S is big. Ah, that, I don't like that at all. I think that's a miss on Joey. And uh, we talked. He goes very, very fast. I think Sam is a rather slow player. I think um, so, too. But, but I, yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, by playing fast, he does put other players in difficult positions. I saw it last year. I was doing commentary with Morris for the, the Scrabble Players Championship. And we really saw Joey. He, he got himself in trouble. Uh, by missing some plays, but he also got his opponents in trouble by putting them into time pressure. So it's definitely a miss. I'm not trying to excuse him. I think he needed to use more time here and find Lux. But there also is that other side of the the coin, and we'll see um, Sam's clock as this goes forward. Joey seems to be asking the director a question here. Yeah, on Sam's clock, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, uh, Sam doesn't Sam, look annoyed in the slightest, so yeah, nothing to Sam see here. Sam has a Mew, and uh, that seems very clearly to be the uh, the best play here. Uh, scores very well, keeps a good leave, kind of blocks up this board a little bit more. Um, so I, I, I like that play a lot by Sam, and I think he's right to play this one pretty quickly. I agree. If he was behind, he might want to play something to the right of Sox going down to sort of fork the board like maybe Mike or something, so he could set up his E to bingo and also an OM to start opening up that top right, but he's ahead. And so holding on to a nice balanced leave that goes nicely with that U, that R, even that F, I think that's a really nice play. I agree. Uh, I like it. And Joey uh, Gleet, I think, is what he's going to play. Glee or Gleet? I think so, yeah. Well, uh, uh, that... that seems to be the thing to do here. There, there are probably some other options that you want to consider. Uh, look at the pool, think about Greet, think about Glee. Um, but yeah, I think Gleet's probably the right thing. You could to play do. something with home also, like Gleed. I don't really like what it does to the board, G-L-E-D-E, -E, but it does score nicely. I'm, I think Gleet is probably the best play here, but I wouldn't have played it that quickly. Um, taking out that R is definitely a big deal. So. He, he said he was playing slower. We definitely haven't seen it so far. I told you guys I'd believe it when I see it, and right. I am not seeing it 
So uh, yeah, yeah, you've yeah, known Joey a long time, and it's coming through in commentary <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I've known Joey for what 16 years or something like that now. So yeah, more than half of our lives. Yeah, um, you guys have grown up together. Absolutely, yeah. We met at the school Scrabble Championship when I was a eighth grader. I had finished second wow. the year before, and uh, Joey was a little sixth grader. Like, wow, you're that guy. And uh, now he's better <laughs> than me. So, you know, so it goes. Yeah. We see oh, his rating man. listed as 2037 here, but that's the WIGPO rating. Uh, he did get over 2100 in the NASPA rating earlier this year. So big uh, hats off to him. Our third straight 2100 player of the day. Uh, it's just so exciting. You and I both snuck over 2,000, but to get over 2,100 is a level that only a handful of players will ever reach. It's really impressive. Joey, again, having some casual conversation with the people yeah, around. I don't know what's going on there. Sam had a really fun play there, kind of like the Stuckers play where he could have put the K on the star. He could have played Eco Gift through the G and oh. <laughs> one shot the triple again. <laughs> Uh, again, elects not to, and again, key that he didn't because Joey's drawn another S. We'll see if he right. plays this one off immediately in a poor play, or if he maybe thinks a little bit harder about this one. Yeah, I wonder what he would do here. You could do something like drab. Uh, you could play with the G up top. Uh, I don't think there's necessarily as obvious a play on this turn. Uh, Reb and bad, I guess. Oma, that HOM takes a back A is something people should uh, know for their consideration here. What do you guys see in the chat here? It's definitely not an easy turn. Uh, drab seems to be kind of far and away the best play to me, but if you want some other ideas, uh, I like Roband through the O in FICO just to throw things wide, wide open. Or if you want yeah. to, you can play Blonde through the O as well, set up that back E. Uh, as well as your S and create a second bingo line down the 13 row. Um, but I think I think drab or it's anagram darb, um, both of those make a lot more sense than anything else. And drab, I think, of those is the best option here just because it doesn't quite give back as much in terms of parallel plays. I'm a bit embarrassed to say I didn't remember darb was a word, but I am happy to say I remember that fico, like many other words ending in O we've talked about today, like Edo and Jingo, also doesn't take an S, it only takes an ES. So we'll see uh, if both those players know that. That might come into play as this game progresses. Yeah, and if you're Joey and you know Fico doesn't take an S, as I'm almost certain he does, maybe you leave it alone. Maybe you leave the spot there and see if you can coax Sam into playing it. But if you say Sam's got some solid word knowledge, I, I think it's probably not worth it. And again, I just think Drab is such a good play uh, compared to the other options that you've got to make it. You've got to try to score some points here. Can't fall too far behind, as Sam hasn't really stopped scoring yet this game. I'm not sure how many times Joey's played Sam. Sam lives in St. Catharines, which is pretty close to Toronto, so we've gotten to play a few times. Um, and like I said, we also played in Chicago. Uh, so I think I'm... And I also could be biased, right? He's won a lot of challenges, but it's a very small sample size. Uh, but I remember being really impressed. I played the word unstaged. To me, that sounded like a real word, an unstaged play, for example. And he was pretty quick to challenge it, uh, which I, I remember thinking was very impressive at the time. And he got a couple more that I think one of those words, you know, that could be spelled with a Y or an IE, and I picked the wrong one. And again, he was very quick to know it wasn't good. So we'll see as this game progresses if he can live up to the reputation that I'm setting for him. Uh, Sam is very close if he had an end to a very cool word, a type of concrete, I believe. Uh, Uintate. Uintaite, uh, from the Uinta Mountain. okay. Yeah. I saw the Uinta Mountains. I think they're in Utah, maybe? Um, and Uintaite comes from those mountains. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And hopefully from now on, I will pronounce it right. And I will give Joey credit here. We were saying he was playing too fast. This time he slowed down, uh, even though he probably saw this play instantly. It was probably the very first play he saw, but he did his due diligence. He looked around the board and made sure he wasn't missing a better idea. Yeah, and Sam has drawn into some muck finally. A-E, yeah, U into I minus the N is just some hot garbage. 
So uh, Tibia is going to be a beautiful way for him to unclear all of that while addressing that B Joey's just opened. It's going to open the board up more, but it's hard to close things off when you have vowels. Vowels are not good for defense. And I think this right. is a good idea by Sam. If you want to address the G instead, maybe you consider Gutte, G-U-T-T-A-E. A double I leave is not awesome. But if you're worried about the triple-triple, that's what you do. Joey did spend a lot of time on drab. And if I'm Sam, I'm thinking, does he have a blank? Is that why he spent so long thinking here? Um, he could, but, but you can't play scared. This just cleans up the rack so nicely. And it scores nicely. And when you're ahead, that's really important. So I like it. And I, the other thing I like is he played it pretty fast. Uh, which knowing that Joey's going to try and speed play him a bit, I think is really important to sort of stay ahead on the clock here. Once again, Joey, I think is a pretty easy turn. Pang looks like it makes a ton of sense. Just P-A-N to the G. Um, keeps the board good and open for you and uh, creates a new line, which you want to do given the score. Uh, another option is P-A-A-N through the A and drab, making P-I-A-I and N-A, but that shuts things down, which I think is not the right idea for Joey. Um, I would have already played Pang, honestly, but I, I know there's definitely some other stuff maybe to think about. You can play the same three tiles, P-A-N, for the same score at E4, making Rep and Uda, um, but that doesn't do quite the same stuff for the board. So I guess you decide, do I leave the triple-triple open? and score over here? Or do I string a P that's hard to block and uh, just kind of sit there with it? I don't think the triple triple is that important because the G is pretty tough to hit in that position. If you had a blank, maybe it's a bit different. If you really needed it to hit the triple triple, it's a bit different. The P is going to stay open a lot of the time there. And if it does stay open, leaving LANS gives them a good shot to hit a bingo there. But I really want to hit an E, an I. Let's see what he gets in this three tile draw. Not a bingo tile to start, but a tile he's going to be able to score with. So that's not the worst draw. And um, Ayer, and I would his rack. <laughs> Ayer and I on that last tile would have given him Nasalize or Salonize, but he's still going to be able to score very well with that D, just EA at the bottom or something. That's true. He was very close to the sort of bingo he needed. Uh, he could just play ZA at the bottom there, scoring about 44, I think, but it would take out the E, which is really the best sort of spot on the board for him at the moment. Yeah, so, I mean, there are some bingo lines. I think the the RE is is pretty easily extendable for, for bingos. The UT, if you get an O, out anything is going to fit there as well. So deceptively a little more open than it looks. You can also play ES or AS bingos underneath HOM. You've got the AR right. hook that he didn't knock out. Maybe that's why he played socks instead of locks, though I'm certain. And it's bingos weird. down from the T of Stookers, above the T of Tibia, from the L of Gleet, down from the P. This board definitely has some life. Uh, even above the AR of Hoya and Stookers going to the right and going down to Oft um, from the OF. So there's definitely some lanes on this board. Joey doesn't have to panic. It is Sam's turn. Um, he cleaned up the rack. He no longer has that vowel problem to the same degree. He has four of them. He'll play off a few and a G here, I would think. Uh, a, he's setting up. We mentioned it in last game. Is he going to play with home, you think? I'd, I'd prefer Tegua in the same spot. Um, yeah, over one more tile. Three more play points. Play one more tile, so three more points. But uh, Egg is kind of the same idea, just a slightly inferior version, if you're asking me. I think it's a bit worse. It also sets up vague. You could get hit for a 50-point play there. Um, yeah. But TED is is a nice, strong lead that goes really nicely with the P in particular. Um, so it's, it's probably a bit worse, but it's not going to be a lot worse. This looks like a totally reasonable option by Sam here. Yeah, I still prefer Tegua, but that makes a lot of sense as well. Um, kind of the same idea, keep good tiles, slowly whack these lanes out one at a time while trying to score as best you can as you're not drawing letters that score well. So now Joey has the decision. Does he burn that bottom right part of the board by playing Za? Does he play Za with Rez maybe? I think, you know, he's so close to something like Nasalizer, but you don't really want to fish here. So he's going to have to play the Z tile off and score. 
I think I, there are enough lanes that I would be playing it in the bottom right, but I'm not sure if that's necessarily right. I would play ZA. A part of the rationale is LIN holds Pangolin to draw a lot, which is going to open this board. Now, oh, in, that's Joey, beautiful. Yeah, Joe is dead. Uh, Sam has Dahoti, D H O O T I E, in two spots. So Joey couldn't block them both. Of course, he also can't play scared and can't assume Sam has that. But it uh, looks like Dahoti is going to come down in one of the two spots as long as Sam sees it. And, uh, and Sam is going to jump up. Um, even people with good word knowledge might not necessarily know this word and the spelling, right? Because um, I think you can also spell it without the E, if I'm not mistaken. So There's a lot we of will, Yeah, so we'll see if he's confident. I think he's... It looked like he was about to set it up. And now I think he's alphabetizing his tiles, although the I is not alphabetized. Um, he's also close to, like, photo sort of words down from the P. That would be fun. If you could get some sort of cool... Photo word. If he doesn't bingo here, he could even make a play with hmm, HM. Uh, I think you could play OH and HM there, setting up your other O. So he definitely wants to bingo here. It would be really difficult for Joey after that. But if he misses the bingo, he might still be okay as well. Yeah, of course, you want to play right. Duty if you have it. Um, right. Dahoti has a lot of, it's D-H-O-O-T-I, D-H-O-O-T-I-E, D-H-O-T-I, oh, and D-H-O-T, or D-H-U-T-I. So lots of spellings, but he does find it. Um, I might think a little bit harder about what spot I'm going to play this in. I think I prefer the other spot to this one quite a bit because it whacks two bingo lines at once, the, the lanes on top of A-R, and then also the O-D-S or O-D-E spot. Um, but sometimes you're just so excited to find a bingo that you drop it, or maybe he's got another reason for electing to play it down there. It's just not what I, I would do. You, you could get hit with a big Q or J play here uh, pretty easily. I guess yeah. the other spot, I think, I'm trying to see where it would be on the board. I think the O would slot beside the double, so you could get hit with a big J spot there too, but this one looks like you could hit with a bit more. Maybe his thought is Joey can score the T and then I can get the D sort of thing. He did just draw the blank. Uh, so Joey's chances have gotten even worse here. Uh, we're going to have to yeah, get he's Sam's have score to... updated after that bingo. Yeah, Jeff's a boot for Sam if he wants to burn the blank next turn. Uh, and I don't think Joey's going to knock out that spot. So he'll have a decision to make for sure. I wonder if you're Joey, how long, if do you see Pangolin first off? And how much are you willing to give up to try to draw that? Um, LIN is not mm. necessarily what you want to hold out of this rack. GIS right. is the most ideal leave, but Pangolin is a really nice way to get this board back and open. Um, but Alec in the chat, our former national champion, just pointed out that there's only one O left. You can see two O's were played in both of uh, Sam's bingos. So oh. that, along with FICO that he played, he's already played off five of the six O's. Yeah, wow. Yep. Okay. Good, good point. Um, Pangolin, not super likely. Um, and now, yeah, uh, we're going to have to make a decision if we're Sam uh, Jutz, Jute, you know, do we burn the blank yeah. for uh, 54 points or do we try to play through this? I think because I don't really see any other play that would be close. I think you burn it. Um, I'd really like to get the updated score if um, one of our producers is listening, just to make sure because the exact score would really affect my decision here. We're at 283 to 220. 283 for yeah. Sam. This is a great time to burn it. Because you already I, I, had one bingo. You score 60 more here, 16, 17, 18, 54 here. Uh, that's putting you up basically two bingos. I, I would burn it unless there's a play I'm missing. I mean, WUD and WAR is really the only other thing I think that, that has some, some merit here. And I just... Oh, I just no, don't. I don't like this. Oh. I guess there's only one O left, so that helps the play. And he's leaving towards a bingo, but the play that scores 54 points is almost a bingo, right? Like, you can't get too trapped in the thought of needing a bingo. And if Joey has an O there, you could be giving back 60 points, right? Yeah, that like last O is going to be something. Key. Now, I'm not a fan of that play uh, at no, all, but he's going to draw a club. With the lead. 
Yeah, clubbed plays in two spots now. So it was an aggressive play. You know, it probably has the highest right. bingo percentage next turn of any non-exchange. Um, but it can give back huge things. I would have just burned the blank and played Jots there. But this gamble is going to work out just fine for Sam, um, barring some crazy block from Joey that would make no sense for him to do. And Joey yeah, also has to be a little bit annoyed. Bingo. He just blocked vague <laughs> and then drew the V immediately. Yeah. <laughs> And Jins doesn't take a front A. A G I N is another one of those short words that doesn't take an S. So uh, you really have to know those short words that don't take S's because the short words are the ones that come up so often. Um, so the bingo is, oh, sorry. Oh, he is playing in that spot on the board. He did manage to block clubbed in both spots, but perhaps there's still another bingo re-clubbed <laughs> <laughs> challenge on that one right yeah um if he doesn't bingo like he could still say play something like cube in the bottom left that would still score nicely leave ld blank um that's my Be first thought but i would be looking through that n for a bingo for sure is there anything ending in ned for example only be uncle through the n and that's not oh. quite gonna fit uh, Dustin Dude in the nine. chat, finding a nine. How do you like that? Um, follow yeah, him on uh, Twitch. He streams some Scrabble content. Love to see it. And Reducible. Wow. Uh, I that's hyped not... up. Oh, look. I, is he setting it up on his rack? He is. Look at that. I oh. hyped up Sam's bird knowledge. I'm going to take all the credit for his success, even though he's the one who's playing this amazing game. Hats off to Sam. Wow. Yeah, I don't know that he's seen it yet. He's got the E in the wrong spot. He might be seeing oh, deducible, true. deductible. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sorry, man. I got it ahead him. of myself there. Oh, man. If he sees it, that's going to be huge. Oh, yeah. I think he was probably more looking at sevens there, not nines. Uh, there aren't really lanes on this board for sevens unless you could hook volume to volumes. Uh, cube, which is what he has picked up right now, would still be a good play, but Joey, by blocking clubbed in two spots, has really kept himself uh, at least mathematically alive in this game. Yeah, when you're losing by 100, you do generally want to close every bingo line you can, and uh, yeah, it worked out great for Joey. Um, Alec points out educable, but is that does that fit anywhere on the board? I don't think so. No, I didn't think uh, so. He had no bingos according uh, to Quackle, so. Except reducible. Uh, producer's asking about rebuckled, but that's not good. Interestingly, buckled, B U C K L E R E D, is a word. Uh, it didn't play, but I don't think any of us knew that one. Wow. All right, Sam picks up the Q. That might be trouble, or he might be able to knock out that big O spot with Q I. Uh, Joey plays Raya, which I think makes sense. He had A-A-I-I-R-R. -R. you got to play off some of those. Uh, right. Joey's going to need to pull an S to get back into this game, though. And there's just one unseen uh, or a blank. You know, a blank would do it as well. One unseen blank still, the other on Sam's rack. Uh, instead, uh, he drew uh, sort of a middling rack. It's not terrible, but it's not that good. Yeah, if I'm Joey, I start thinking about how do I bingo down to that C? You know, how do I bingo from the P? What are certain words I can be drawing? And I'm going to try to tailor my leaves to those just because the board is pretty dead after playing Vuln. Right. And Sam here can burn his blank again. Um, he has the Q and he has OD. So if he makes the blank a U, he could play quad uh, beneath AG and GI. And that will score quite a lot. Uh, the Q 16. won't really be in the lane very much because the C obstructs it. So I think that's another miss of a burnt uh, blank by Sam. It can be difficult to burn those blanks. We love those bingos. He's leaving very strongly towards the bingo. But um, for the second time in this game, I would have burnt my blank. He also had quote uh, through the T in duty for 63. Oh, yeah, even better. Wow. So, uh, mm, but I mean, he's so bingo prone now. He just but he just know. drew a second end. This is like the sort of problem you can have, and this is it's exactly just sort of letting Joey stick around this game. You know, 
when you're ahead by 60 on a board that's starting to die and late in the game, you want to go up 120. It's just so much more powerful than staying up 80 and having the blank. And this this is just not what you can do in this situation. You, you know, it's always tough to decide, do I try to close the board and keep things tight or do I smash the gas? But what you don't want to do is get caught up fishing because the only way you lose is if you miss your fishes a few times as your opponent plays a bingo. So I think points, you've just got to score points. I would have played jute. I would have played quote. Uh, Oh, man. And yeah, you're right. Joey gets to stick around. He's still down 100. It's still Sam's game to lose, and he's very much in the driver's seat. But uh, this is not what you'd like to get caught doing, although maybe these are the spread plays. Yeah, maybe. But I don't think Joey's given up on this game, nor should he. Um, neither blank's been played. He doesn't know his opponent has it. If a Vuln's word gets played, maybe it sort of forks the board and starts opening some floaters. So I definitely don't think this game's dead. Also, he played Rhea. Uh, it takes a common front hook of an A for Aria. Uh, so there's a lane there, down from the P, and down to the C. So, and he actually looks like he's almost sort of close to Bingo's down to the C. Um, not that I can come up with anything, but just with that TIC sort of ending, A TIC ending. Another fun thing, unseen to Joey, I'm going to drop it in chat. This is a terrifying pool. Oh, I didn't uh, realize about the pool, but... I-I-L-N-N-N-O-R-S-T-Y blank blank. Like, oh, oh, wow. goodness. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because if you're trying to come back in the game, one thing you need, not just to hit your own big plays, but you need your opponent to get stuck in some difficult racks. And with that pool... It's almost impossible to draw like seven bad tiles, even if you sort of try. I will point out one more lane on the board. It's ending in AE. So the ZA play there sort of obstructs, but there are certain words that take that AE ending. Um, so that could be a big lane when you're talking about fishing for very specific plays you could hit. Man, I think if you're Joey, priority one has to be getting rid of this V. Yeah. Um, a E E E I I O. Not too many vowels. I'm wondering if a play like L A V makes a little bit of sense just to unload it without blocking any of the lines that are open. More ideally, you'd like to open another line as well. But uh, I don't know. There, I don't see a good way to do that. You could also maybe play Devon to the N um, or Viand through the N. But I don't think you want to make the Voln spot go away. Um, yeah, it's tough because he also needs to leave enough tiles in the bag to be able to bingo twice, right? Uh, he, one bingo is not going to do it. There are two blanks out, but also by only playing one, it, he must have really calculated what he could draw. Um, that's a very quick play of just one tile there because I guess he's going for privated. That would be my guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, three unseen, four unseen blanks and two, or two blanks and four E's for private aid. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. Like, you have to fish for very specific things, and that P is actually very hard to block unless you play directly beneath it. Because anywhere further down the board, you can't really block there. Uh, uh, unless, private is not a word. Oh, private is not a word. Okay. <laughs> I knew, I was wondering which of us were going to make more uh, phony mistakes. And I've been trying not to use Quackle. I'm willing to make mistakes. I And private it is set up on Joey's rack. I, I did mention Sam has good word knowledge, but knowing if private it is a word or not is tough. It, it could totally be good, right? Wow. Um, I mean, the best place to play a phony two is when you're down by 100, because the last exactly. thing an opponent ever wants to do is challenge the word when if they challenge it and they're wrong, you will then go ahead. You know, a lot of the time they're like, well, let me just make a play. I'll go back up by 30. I think I'll win. Um, so that's that's tricky. Um, I'm not sure if Joey knows private it is good or not. Um, I do know that he studies rather quickly by alphagram. And so it's possible. This is one, two, A, D, E, I, P, R, T, V, that if you see it, you immediately play privated. But I think Joey right. probably knows or has a hunch this is no good and is just going to play it anyway. Um, I, even I if you're stop to think if it's good. I just saw him setting it up, and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. 
I hope in a game I would have stopped and been like, wait, that looks a bit funny, but it's when those words end in ed, er, you know what the common word is. It's hard to know what all the variations are. I know in common English, we wouldn't say privated. It's just not the sort of word we would say, but this dictionary can definitely accept some very unusual um, endings. And Matt, you're getting some love in the chat from uh, Cedric Lewis, who congratulated you on winning a tournament. Although now I see your response saying it, it was your brother. <laughs> that was my <laughs> brother, Chris Kanick. Yep. <laughs> Ooh, right, well, okay. He blocks it. Yep. Blocks good for him. He knows really. that's the best lane. That is such a that is such a good play. It's yeah, the one lane you one really want ends. to address. Sam um, pulling into it, this beautiful this beautiful pool as well. So he's, oh, the second blank too. Um, oh goodness. So he's probably got like actually tens from REI with this rack. Right. He could just play Pangolin and, you know, keep the other blank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you can do anything in this case. I wonder if he has a nine down to the AE. Um, or I guess now that the V is there, ending in VE would be possible, although VED would be more likely, but it's blocked. Something like ending in lived, for example, unlevied, something like that. Unlevied, if the CU wasn't there, it would be a triple triple. And look, no. Joey's finally drawing good tiles. <laughs> too little, too late. He has to be terrified exactly. that he hasn't drawn a blank yet. Yeah, he's, he's like, like going through his why do all these like, tiles have letters on them? I, that's not what I want. And the and seventh Sam, style is a Y. Okay. So point, pointedly, pointedly from the PO is your nine. Yeah, that's a nice find by Billy Nakamura in the chat. Nice to see Vinak and everyone has been commenting. commenting. Uh, Mimo Samantha, Cy Adam, thanks for everyone for contributing. Please remember, guys, if you haven't subscribed, hit that like button. If you're looking for more information on Scrabble, don't forget to go to letsplayscrabble.com and also uh, the wordgameplayer.org, without the, sorry, wordgameplayer.org. Uh, pretty much no matter where you live in North America, as long as it's a populated region, there should be some sort of a, a club near you. Also a lot of tournaments. Clubs are a nice, more casual way to sort of get into it. Um, Another great thing about Scrabble is you can talk, go online and get advice from the very best players in the world for free. That's something you really don't see in another game. If you wanted advice from like Hikaru in the chess world, you would be one of 10,000 people trying to get his attention. If you go onto Will's stream, uh, he'll be answering you directly and Will has won the North American Championship. I think that's so cool and so generous of all of our top players uh, with their time and expertise. Definitely, uh, definitely a lot of experts out there and a lot of mentors out there in general uh, in Scrabble. Just a lot of fun people, a lot of nice people as well. Um, definitely, if you haven't played a tournament yet, try to get yourself out to one. Wordgameplayers.org, find upcoming tournaments near you, uh, find clubs near you, just Google Scrabble Club near me, uh, all sorts of stuff out there. Uh, also, some places to play. I'll give a plug to Woogles. Uh, Woogles.io, that's W-O-O-G-L-E-S dot I-O, um, is a great place to find online games uh, against players of all calibers. Uh, a lot of tournament players are on there now. You can sometimes watch me play poorly on there. My username is Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, so find me there. <laughs> Sam draws A-E-I-N-T out of the bag. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, and Joey has strayers with no spots now. And you could play portrays, I guess, uh, from the PO. Oh, that's, uh, that's cool, yeah. Yeah, that, that's nice. It would block native, uh, Sam's best out, I would imagine. Like, he'll still be able to go out with entail to the L and bones. So uh, Sam can take a load off here, knowing that he has just done a very difficult thing, which is beating the great Joey Kravchik. And hey, he, Joey is going to take his time here. For one time, the 2,000 rated player didn't double blank the other guy. Though we have seen double blankings in all three games on this board. Though. Yeah, hopefully as this tournament progresses, we'll see more one and one blank. Uh, 
which tends to lead to a bit more of an even game. Although despite uh, this game was probably the one that got out of hand a bit earlier, but the first two really, uh, I guess the second game also Jackson was pulling away. The first game was one of the best games I've seen in some time. Both players, uh, Mac and Zach played so well. I think all six of our players on stream today should be commended with how well they've played. They've really given us quite a lot to enjoy and it really bodes well for the entire tournament to come. And, and as Jared mentioned earlier, if you're watching these players and you're like, oh, I could never contend with them, I'd just get crushed at a tournament. No, you won't. There are different divisions. This is the expert division of the NWL lexicon. And you wouldn't start here. You wouldn't be playing Joey Krafchick on this board in this instance. Uh, you'd start a little bit easier. And hey, if, if you play well, maybe you work your way up. If not, hey, you're still having fun, right? We all love this game and uh, we all get what we want out of it. Oh, if I'm Joey, I would have thought about playing Strayer next to Linseed anyway, just making V-U-L-N blank S. <laughs> Let's see if we can get away with it. <laughs> I, I think spread is too important. I just yeah. don't think that's going to stay. It, it, he didn't yeah, need to no. do that. If he needed to for some reason, maybe. But no, uh, this is going to end things for us tonight. Uh, Sam, I guess we'll take a bit more time. Why not? He has it. But... I'm pretty sure Entail will be the best leave, and it'll cap off a really good game. I started by saying he had good word knowledge, and he flashed it, getting down Stooker and Duty uh, with that yeah. weird spelling. Yeah. So two two good double O bingos from Sam, and I'll pick up the the two blanks later on. And I really just he got all six O's. So we've been counting blanks. Maybe we have to start counting O's. He got no uh, Joey got one O, but he blundered with it. Uh, he played socks instead of locks. And uh, oh right, excuse yeah. me. So yeah. Sam did all the right things with his O's. He bingoed with a bunch. He used one to block Joey's privated phony. Uh, maybe our producer can ask him real quick uh, if they yeah, if Joey thought it was a they word. It was good. Yeah, and if if Sam would have challenged as well, that's a that's an interesting question. It looks like uh, Sean um, is so asking see... now for us. Yeah, the back of Sean there, uh, our great producer of this event, helping out Josh and Kieran. Sean's also run a bunch of tournaments, including uh, at least one that I've played in in Mississauga, his home city. He's also the director of the Mississauga Scrabble Club. So we've been mentioning all these different clubs. If you happen to be in the Mississauga region, definitely reach out. Sean is so welcoming. He will uh, help you learn strategy uh introduce you to people and you'll have a great time i've been there for some of his tournaments not any of the clubs just because of traffic it's too hard but um let's see if sean gives us an answer and then i think we'll probably be wrapping up uh here today sam saw reducible but didn't find it had enough points so i guess he elected wow. to pass it just because it didn't score very well so he, he passed on scores a lot. He passed on jute, he passed on quad, and then he passed on reducible. But uh, it seems like he did see all of those plays and just elected not to make them to score 30 I told each you, time. His play the finding ball. and uh, word knowledge is definitely his strength. And I think I mentioned how he won a class prize last year. I think he'll definitely be in the running for it this year. If his rating is low enough to even qualify this year, he might uh, not be in that bottom half. Yeah, it shows him at 1836. I don't know if that'll do it. Yeah, it'll be close, but regardless, uh, I really appreciate everyone for watching tonight. I believe tomorrow morning it is me and Heather McCall from 9 till 1 calling four more NWL games. And then I mentioned that very secret uh, person who might be coming in during the lunch break, so please stay tuned. I believe, Matt, you'll be back in the afternoon tomorrow, is that right? I will not be back in the afternoon, but we have nope. goodies for you all in the afternoon. Uh, we'll be switching to CSW play tomorrow afternoon, and we will have two incredible commentators, Austin Shin, and I believe Jesse Day is the other one. Um, two oh, wow. very, very top-notch Scrabble players. Uh, definitely going to teach you all a thing or two if Collins is your game or if you're bilectual. Uh, good treat for you all. I will be back on the stream uh, Wednesday or, or Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Uh, but okay. definitely some good stuff to be glistened tomorrow. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. Let's play Scrabble. We'll be here the next four days, eight games of Scrabble a day, except for four on Tuesday, but those will be the championship penultimate games. Um, we'll see you all back yeah. soon. Thanks to everybody. 
for being here, uh, putting up with me for eight games of Scrabble today, putting up with Jared for three. Uh, hope to see you around again very shortly. And if you haven't played a tournament yet, get on out there soon. All right, we're taking off for tonight. We will see y'all tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you there bright and early. Have a good one. Adios.